How is that? Thank you. So, um, good evening. Uh, welcome to the planning board meeting, July 23rd. Um, I want to just take a minute to welcome our newest planning board member, who is a returning veteran of the planning board, Carol Dever. Thank, Thank you. Uh, and uh, we are first up. I will entertain a motion to open the continued public hearing for the site plan review major project. 90 Hayden Row, which is the Town of Hockington School Department parking lot, proposed school bus parking lot. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So welcome. Come on. Come on down. <laughs> We do have two members who are abutters on the list, so they will step off the board um, and not be participating in the hearing. Um, we just need a majority vote. Is it, yes, that's right. Correct. So, um, so we're still in in good shape. Five of us. Hold on. We need all five in that case because yes. Frank has missed one. So I think it's important to note that we need all five of these remaining members on the board unless Amy gets here in the next mm -hmm. couple of moments. Should be should be a, a sixth. Okay. All right. Um, so go ahead, catch us up, please. Uh, good evening, I'm Bill Mertz from World Tech Engineering, representing the Huntington uh, School Department. Uh, I'd just like to walk through some of the changes that we've made since the uh, the last meeting, uh, as well as uh, in discussions with the IDPR review consultant. And I, I brought copies as well, the nine size, half size, as well as two, si uh, two copies of full size sets of plans. Maybe you can make sure you highlight specifically the changes. Absolutely, yeah, I'm, I'm right gonna, I'll walk through that. It's so warm. Not off the press. It was a hot ride over here. <laughs> oh, I got an extra. All right. All right. These are the same as oh, the packet? Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. You're wherever you want to be. Either way. So just a reminder, Amy, both Carol and uh, Gary cannot sit on this particular hearing. Oh. Because they're both abutters. And we need five of these six people um, because Frank is not here. Okay. So okay. as a, as do I make five? You no, make six. six. Okay, so six. we need five of the six sure. because Amy got here in time <laughs> to be present at this meeting. Okay. So the biggest change, uh, the, the layout remains the same. Uh, the circulation pattern associated with the buses pulling in and out remains the same. Uh, the biggest change, what I'll see, is reflective of the stormwater comments that we received, um, as well as working through issues with the Conservation uh, Commission as well. Uh, the biggest change is, if you recall, the last last site plan we had on the western and the southern portion of the site we had a, uh, a swale, a drainage swale, which was taking sheet flow coming from the east to the west, collecting in the swale and discharging into the existing detention basin. Uh, we've since redesigned the grading of the parking lot uh, in response to both stormwater as well as issues relative to uh, fueling the buses on site. Um, we talked about a, a potential oil water separator on site, so that's why we've redesigned it. Instead of the sheet flow going from the front of the site, the school side, towards the back, we've now, it's all draining toward the middle of the site in kind of like a V, where we've added two double graded catch basins that then discharge into um, a storm septa, basically an oil particle separator that treats um, suspended solids as well as any spills that would happen uh, in the parking lot for oils or residual oils coming off the vehicles. That's treated and then discharged into the detention basin uh, prior to discharge into the wetland. So that's the, the biggest biggest change. The, basically, the, re, the grading of the entire site has been regraded to, to get that slope coming into the middle. Uh, another change is the, it was a sidewalk or walkway that was going from uh, kind of the second walkway down to the loop road. Given the steepness of the natural topography and there was concerns with ADA, requirements, essentially you would need a level landing and a ramp, uh, potentially railings going down to that site. And because of that, we've since eliminated that from the project right now. Um, there are other ways to get down to the loop road, and the, really the purpose of those two, that walkway and the handicap ramps was to just provide access into the buses inside the lot. Um, 
I think I showed up the last time, but we've added two, two uh, uh, handicap accessible spaces on the site uh, as well. And we've redone some of the grading, uh, more so to in increase the size of the detention base and the, the extent that we can. Uh, we're limited on the surrounding area, but again, that's more speaking towards stormwater. Um, so that another issue that was raised was the issue of snow collection and snow stockpiling uh, on site. Uh, we since had two emails from Mr. Westling from the Department of Public Works saying that he's going to snow plow like he does other school grounds and uh, town facilities. There will not be stockpiling of snow on the site. It will be removed and taken off site. Uh, so John has confirmed that. Um, second thing we talked about was the lighting. Uh, we talked about what the impact would be to go into 15 foot high light poles versus the 25 foot poles that we currently show. Doing an analysis of that, we would require, as I had mentioned, three additional light poles, two of which would need to be placed inside the parking area, and two of which would need to have double arm poles to get the level of lighting that we would require. The concern is the two light poles and foundations that would be located in the lot would preclude the movement of the buses that we had talked about pulling in and pulling out. At the location of the light poles, it may require them to back up and maneuver, which we don't want to do when children are getting on and off the bus. Um, so for that reason, um, as I kind of alluded to prior in the last meeting, um, putting in those additional light poles in the parking lot itself kind of throws off the whole circulation pattern of what we're trying to do with the buses. So we're still seeking a waiver uh, from that requirement. We also talked a little bit about landscaping, both on the school side and the back, and I know there was a site walk that was done. Um, if you're down on a loop road looking up, basically over the vegetation you see the top of the building. So you don't see the, um, the field, essentially, if there were a car or a bus parked in there. Given the vegetation that's back there, you, you, don't, you won't be able to see any vehicles. Um, we talked about the front uh, as potential areas for landscaping, and I think the school department is committed um, to hopefully in the future, uh, given budget constraints. The, the cost of the project since the last meeting, given the drainage requirements that were, were coming into play, the cost has already gone up significantly, and we have a bid where we're already kind of over our budget. So we're trying to work within the budget we have to get something in place prior to the upcoming school year. So at this time, any additional cost that we're adding um, is just not going to be feasible this, this fiscal year um, to get the landscaping in. But the school department, if desired, Going forward, seek additional funds, we would certainly entertain adding landscaping. Um, is, is also going back to the lighting, um, Officer Schofield had sent a letter. We talked about what are the hours of operation of the lighting, should the lot lights be shut off at night. I think Officer Schofield expressed a concern that having the lights on, like the other school campus lighting, um, for safety reasons would be, would be more beneficial. Um, so a lot of the, the, site, the site work, we're still working through Conservation Commission. That's the biggest challenge of this site, which we kind of knew from the beginning. Working with the existing detention basin, the size of the detention basin, um, peak rate control, the amount of water that's getting into the basin and, and then getting out, something we're still working with on CONCOM. Um, but I think this is the, the site plan that we, uh, we're proposing to go with going forward. Okay, so. thank you. Um, I think we're going to, Phil, are you prepared to speak to your comments? Yeah. That, um, I, we really appreciate that you worked on those today. Um, this is a little bit out of our ordinary process. We're moving as fast as we can um, because it's an in-town project and we're motivated to at least get your answer for you. Okay, uh, for the record, Phil Paris of Beta Group, uh, we just, are the town's consultant. Did you see the newest plans? Uh, are these the ones that planned yesterday or Thursday? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So Thank you. I was out Thursday and Friday, so I was after looking up today. Thank you. So, um, so the, there is, as Bill, <coughs> Bill mentioned, there is a number of uh, storm water uh, outstanding issues with that. Um, and there's a few more that we picked up on this go around, but uh, so I'm not going to really, really address those now. But there is uh, a few that, um, uh, so the, the grading change from sloping all to, all to grading in the middle. And in order to, for them to save some of the you know, slope in the back to prevent, uh, this, this back side is sloped very gradual. It's less, it's a half a percent or less mm -hmm. in grade. And that's very difficult to grade with a, with a bituminous pavement. 
um, and it's likely to be, especially with the, the number of buses and heavy vehicles that are going to be over it over time, um, it's going to likely be susceptible to, to ponding areas. And, and obviously in the, in the winter when it freezes, you know, some issues. So we recommend that the no, no pavement be sloped less than 1%. Again, to, to, to promote uh, positive drainage. Mm -hmm. um. <coughs> oh, let me see. Let me go back. So, um, the so a lot of the drainage of. I think there's, we, we just need more information to be able to complete the review of the drainage. The, um, oh, so one other thing about the lighting. Do you have your lighting plans? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, I was just looking at this today. There's a big gap in the middle. Yeah. So I, I think it's doable, you know, if, if, if you're amenable to give them a waiver. Um, but it's really, there's a real dark spot in the middle. So I think if we maybe move this pole, even if it's off the back of the pavement, so it's reoriented this way, and the same with this one, I think you can get the, and put this one in this, in this island here, I think you can reduce that. I don't know if you guys saw that, sorry. Yeah, no, I, I, I was waiting for that, that question, because it was obvious to me that there was um, a big gap, no matter whether the lights are on or. Right. Motion sensitive or so through the chair, the big gap even with the 25 foot, yes, okay. right? That's the that's 25 foot 25 poles, foot right? Yeah, and if yeah. You, you know, I we concur the, the number of poles would be d doubled at least <coughs> in order to yeah. spread the light around here, so um. and then obviously, you had the landscape issue if you're going to address that and stuff, but. Um, but there is a little bit of concern about the no, the amount of stormwater runoff that's going to be generated because you're paving so an acre much. and a half of land that you know. So I think they're going to have to do a little bit more to meet the standard, particularly the, the increase in peak rate of runoff from the site. Um, so we would expect some. And and unfortunately, this site is also the soils are not very good. So it's very difficult to, to promote infiltration on, on the site and, and uh, mediate it that way. But uh, so anyway, those are the, the big things. site concerns. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do you, I'll take some questions around the board. I, I, I had a question. I think Phil, probably for you. Um, with the runoff issue, uh, especially with the peak rate of runoff, as it flows into the detention pond, is there risk of that water kind of over going over the boundary of the detention pond and going off onto the loop road at all, or is that part of? So, um, so the, obviously the the the, uh, the standards for stormwater runoff when this was created. Uh, are different today. So yeah. right now, for instance, we we use the, the, the extreme rainfall data from um, uh, that, that was generated um, and used by NOAA now. Um, it wasn't what this was designed for. So for instance, our 100-year storm event is significantly greater. And right now, the, the existing conditions, although we haven't been able to fully vet it, shows that the peak rate, peak elevation for a 100-year storm event is right at the, 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 the rim of the, the basin. Yeah. So anything more than that, it's going to go over. What they've done so far to, to try to mitigate that or try to prevent that from happening is increase the flow out of the basin by putting some more holes in the structure. Um, so which just passes the issue further down. It just goes down into the stream, that little creek, right? <coughs> right. Essentially. And without without doing any kind of impact analysis on that, 
typically the rule is don't increase the peak rate of runoff and then you're going to cause no harm. So it would be hard to create a parking lot of that size without increasing the right. The, the right. I mean, they, they are increasing right? it some, but probably not enough to 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 mitigate the the you know the, the amount of payment. So. Okay. Is that it? The chair. Yes. Um, as probably everyone knows about the site, the field is about I don't know three feet lower than the school you know the the lawn coming up from the school is that going to be filled or is it is there going to be a a slope down for the buses to drive in um, so the the way the grading is right now um, So we are raising the elevation of the field itself. Um, we were kind of pitching, pitching for us, as I mentioned, from the school side to the back, raising it around 18 inches or so, anywhere between a foot and two feet. Uh, now what we've done is we've kind of shifting it down into the middle, but we're also having to raise the site up because, uh, again, it's all related to stormwater. There's a certain elevation here, which we can't be any lower than. So we're, co we're following that minimum slope up and then we have to have a minimum amount of cover over the pipes so we even come a little bit higher. So it's kind of like a, a V, but what it's doing is it's picking up the edges a little bit. So in short, the elevation of the roadway, the access road, is gonna be, just for reference. Um, it says 527. Yeah, it's five, 527. Mm -hmm. uh, and up here, we're on 528, so it's just a little bit lower than the road is today. And what we're trying to do, um, and we get some, some comments as well, which we're, we're trying to raise the, raise the parking lot to be able to accommodate the stormwater. But we're able to keep it low enough, A, because any more feet of gravel is just the, the cost is way up. So we're balancing, and it, as Phil mentioned, the, the slope of the road. The, the reason why that parking lot is sloped is minimum because it's, it's limiting the amount of elevation you need to raise the parking lot. So we're balancing the drainage, we're balancing the fill, um, balancing grading so what's going to happen we the, the middle elevation is fixed because that's the elevation we need to be above uh, for the outlet of the, of the water quality unit we need to be above the 100 year flood elevation that can't be submerged otherwise that unit doesn't operate as it's designed to so we're fixed here we're coming up in minimal slope and then we're pitching it up minimal as, as Phil had mentioned to try to limit if we pick up this edge then we're even grading even more down the hill because we're catching slope. So we're trying to balance a, a number of different things. Hence we have, you know, admittedly the, the, the minimal slopes. Um, and there was one question as well as far as cover on the pipes. You know, we have in some cases maybe two feet of cover on the pipe. Uh, to gain another foot, that's a foot over this entire site that it just raises the site. So we're trying to, we're trying to balance everything we can knowing that the stormwater uh, is, is a concern. And just one thing I want to mention too is, as far as the runoff from the site, um, the type, the there's D-type soils on this site, which is basically hard pan. So it's not like we're going from sand that's infiltrating to now paving that's all running off. The soils out there right now don't handle, can't infiltrate the soil. So going from that type of soil to a paved soil is not as as um, big as, as, big as, it, as it's it made here, going from grass to pavement. But we still aware of that we need to treat it. Okay, I have some follow-up questions. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, slightly different topics, but um, the vegetation around the outside, both the back and the side there, it's all scrub. You know, yeah. uh, it's it's you know probably covered with poison ivy as well. <laughs> but is it is that going to be all cleared away during the construction? No. Because you said something about regrading and and so on that you might have to do on that right. slope. Right. Um, if you're familiar where the fence is, the mm -hmm. fence out there, um, we're pretty much along the fence line and towards the school where we're clearing um, for the grading. Again, another reason why we don't want to go all the way down the hill, but there's probably 30 feet or so of all that vegetation that's going to going to remain. Okay. And that type of vegetation that's out there is mature weeds. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Uh, exactly. Running back <laughs> relatively quickly as well. 
Yes, it does grow back very quickly. (laughs) Um, And then one last thing, um, Deb and I noticed uh, when we were walking around that area. Um, Obviously, the the school lunch area and the outdoor seating for the school lunch area is bordering right on this uh, parking lot. And this probably is more of a question for you. Um, in terms of the operation. These buses obviously bring kids in the morning and then um, and then are parked there for a while. But are these same buses used at noon for, say, kindergartners that are doing half day? No, we don't have half day. Okay, not anymore. Good. No. Um, <laughs> my kids are a little older. Um, <laughs> uh, so will the buses be um, parked without running? throughout the day or so, so over the lunch hour there's not exhaust um, um no, being, that's you know, there's not yeah. buses being used or being parked in that area idling okay thank you there's laws around idle time in the school know. anyway yeah. that they have to abide by yeah okay thank you Elsa and do you have some questions there yeah um I, I guess I'd like to further the conversation about the area the periphery around it you know it's looking like maybe 10 feet the road the loop road is 10 feet below it is that correct elevation the ele- elevation is 10 foot difference because i the, 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 the yeah the largest the yeah. the right so, but but then the parking lot's being brought up a foot so what i thought initially that you were going to be tucking it behind the berm but in fact you're raising the lot up as you said so you when you look, pick your head up, you will see the buses. They won't be hidden. I think that's a misnomer. Well, you will certainly see some buses. <coughs> I some mean, when you're walking with your head, your, hand, your head straight ahead, mm-hmm. straight, you won't see them because I'm only five feet tall. <laughs> but if you are walking a distance from one of the fields and you look up, you'll see the whole bus. If you look ahead of your ahead, if the kids are walking from the fields on the loop road, further they down, will see. Further, further down. Yeah, the yeah, they'll see the buses. They're not hiding. Um, And then um, I guess I'd also like to know a little bit more about the existing drive, the access drive, to what standard the pavement was made. Was it made to carry the kinds of loads that we're going to be imposing on it? Is it going to be able to handle it? Well, I I think at some point, um, I think there's four inches of asphalt out there, which is what we're proposing now. And I think at some point that access road would probably needs to be repaired at some point anyway. I'm guessing it's, it's design, 13 it's, years it's old. It's designed as a fire access, right. so it's designed to be able to hold a fire truck and all the emergency vehicles. So. I'd like to double check that standard if we could get that information because um, those standards have changed. Um, we have a new code now from two, in 2015 and 2012 mm-hmm. for a BOCO building code, and I'd, I'd just like to, to verify that they are the standard that we need them to be to carry the, those loads because that's a lot more load. You know, than one fire truck or or two. Um, so so if we could just get that research information, that would be great. Um, I still have a concern about the the turning radius for the, the buses as well. The little squared off end. It would be nice if we could where, where the plantings eventually will go. Um, hope, hopefully sooner than later, but where they eventually go, it, it would be nice to pull that back um, a little bit if we could. Um, on the edge because I just I, I sort of actually feel for the bus drivers trying to navigate that turn I, I took a look at the at the diagram that you gave me on um, the turning curve radius and um, I still thought it was going to give them a hard time um, and that would be just give their their, so you the, their cut flunk. this back this way yeah I think that would be um, I think it would be generous it could be a painted stripe where they won't hit the curb um, um, just an indicator, you mean, on yeah, the pavement? Yeah, just an indicator on the pavement, just some, some break. Um, and, yeah, and then I guess I wanted, I, I, I think there, need, there needs to be an environmental um, study done on the, the, what we're doing in that area. So the school is higher than the buses, and the fumes are going up. And so they're not going to escape. It's kind of like we're creating a little bit of a valley. So we've got the trees, we've got 25, 30 foot trees on the loop road. And then we've got a school that's another 25, 30 feet high. We've got buses and then we've got the loop road. Um, so I'm, I'm really concerned that that soot and that smoke and smog is gonna get sucked in. 
Is there any way you could alleviate my concerns about that? Oh, I mean, there's, a, there's an air quality in L. I mean, the buses are on the school on the other side on the front anyway. Yeah. Now we're just in, in the back. Mm -hmm. So I. But it's more of I, an environmental. I mean, I've been walking the Loop, loop Road for ages, um, and there's, there is, it's more of an environmental concern. The kids are playing on the fields. Um, you know, it's part of the every, they're eating lunch there. I think, you know, I think it's more of an environmental concern um, and, and health and safety, welfare, health and well, well, welfare concern um, that we should look into. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah. I was just going to say about the lighting. I'm re reluctant, but I understand the need for the 25 foot poles, so I think I would be okay in this case with the waiver. That I understand if they have more poles, it's going to be difficult for the buses to maneuver. So, even though I would generally pre much prefer the 15 foot. I agree. Height. I'm in. The, I'm on the same page with the, mm -hmm. the height of the light poles, and I, I don't know that we necessarily achieve our goals by just adding a bunch more and mm -hmm. we impose on the design. Yeah, and the other. Th comment was on the um, the landscaping. I mean, I would love to see more landscaping, but I understand their budget's gone up because of the drainage, so if they have to wait and do landscaping another year, I think, I think I'm think i okay with that. So uh, by site, site walk, it was just me and Georgia. <laughs> well, I, I went there <laughs> but, today, too. Yeah, <laughs> but, um, uh, well, I mean, just in, in talking about it in terms of um, a piece of information that we got at, at the site walk was there really wasn't budgeting for the landscaping even before the changes in the plan. Mm -hmm. Um, although I did notice in the in the uh, packet that they are committed to bringing it forward as a question to the voters if it's something that we really, really want to see, and I think that that's you know that's about mm -hmm. as as good as you, you can't you can't make money right you can't you can't be nice. make it <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, we definitely are being more flexible because it's a, a school project for sure. Mm -hmm. My last comment. Yeah. Um, so this handicapped sidewalk that's going to go from between the middle and high school to get down to the parking lot, it sounds like you've changed the grading. It's still handicap accessible. It's not too steep for someone in a wheelchair or? Correct. Okay. Yeah, the, the portion that was not um, compliant was the back portion going down towards the okay. road. From here, back up to the school is, is completely compliant. Okay. And, and honestly, we had actually asked for that sidewalk to continue just as kind of a nice thing to, edge, for yeah. the kids that really weren't taking the bus to get mm -hmm. down to the loop road. They walk on the dirt path now. Anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. you know, the sidewalk, we're just sticking with what is required for the bus parking lot, and we got rid of the rest, which was really just kind of a nice to have. Right. Mm -hmm. So, Dave? I'm good. I just want to follow up question. Phil had made a comment, Bill, about making a recommended change to the, the, the um, percent grade mm -hmm. for the drainage. Is that something, I don't know if this, that's the first you've heard of this, or is that something that you guys can potentially accommodate? Yeah, I mean, like I said, what I'm trying to do is it's, it's holding this point and coming Correct. up this way. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'm going to take a look at what going from, I think we're half a percent um, to, to one percent uh, would do. Um, I'm more concerned over on this side, and we're trying to make this slope as uh, this detention basin is as large as we can, because that's the only one of the only ways that we're going to be able to accommodate the peak rate control, uh, other than putting um, stormwater chambers underneath the entire parking lot. That's not going to infiltrate anyway. It's just storage. That's even going to make the site even higher. Then we'll be talking about walls and everything else, and then it just it, it completely completely blows up on us. Uh, but yeah, we can certainly take a look at the at the grading increase in the slopes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, I see a question from the pub, a member of the public behind you. Hi, Gary Trenzel, 31 Chamberlain Street, Street, speaking as a member of the public and not as a member of the planning board. Um, I have a question and a comment, so if I could ask my question through the chair for the school folks. Um, I'm wondering if there are other, other pieces of school property that have to be plowed um, when there are vehicles parked on them. Um, only if there are vehicles parked on. There's no, we don't have any, you know, overnight parking designated. Right? Yeah. So this would be the first. And, and, and so, so I guess I, I recognize that that uh, Mr. Westland responded and said, yeah, they could clear just like they clear all the other mm -hmm. pieces of land. But unless they have keys to the buses and they can go, I mean, there's always going to be cars parked there. It's either going to be buses parked there or it's going to be vehicles parked there. 
And I don't understand how they're going to clear a lot when there are always vehicles parked there. Well, I, I guess I would, I, you know, speaking, I, speaking for John, speaking for the bus company, um, my assumption is what they do now is probably stack the buses as tight as they can together, just like you see at a yep. car lot. Mm -hmm. And then they plow that area. The buses will then be able to go out and do their route if we have school that day. And while they're out on route, we'll be able to clear the rest of the bus space. So, so that's where my concern is, though, is um, because, I mean, usually the schools are cleared before we have the students come back to school. And now what we're going to do is we're going to have the snow being cleared while the students are in school. And it just, it just doesn't seem like it's, it's I, I would it just say seems clear, like it's going to be really problematic to me. The clearing, the clearing would be minimal, I would say, while the kids were in school. And it'd be no different as if it snowed while we were in school. We, we clear parking lots while we were in school. So I would say on this field, there would be no, you know, we would clear it while the buses were out picking up the kids. So from 6 a.m. or whatever time they leave, while they're gone on their route for an hour and a half, we would, we would be able to clear that lot. So the buses, you know, would be ready probably prior to school starting. I would say, you know, I mean, anything can happen on any given day, but but I'm confident that we could do it prior to school starting. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I I make the assumption for myself, just making a comment, that it, it is a it will be an increased um, effort level of effort, mm -hmm. but the technology exists to clear bus lots everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. So that that isn't we are we are right. Um, but if they can do it, it in Ashland, we can do it in Hockington, right? Right. I do understand it's right behind the school, and it does, I mean, it, 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 it is an increased load on the DBW, and it, it, you know, it's, it's something to think about, but I have some confidence that um, the technology yeah. exists for that. Myself. Yeah, and again, we really work hand in hand with DBW and Mike Manzer and John Westerling mm -hmm. on, you know, making sure that school lots and the roads are cleared and safe for school. So. This would just be added to that. Yes, it's a little more, but I think it's something we can handle. I do, I do think, um, uh, Mr. Trendell brought up a point that I hadn't thought about. I do think that clearing during the school day is something that needs to be thoughtfully managed as well, mm -hmm. where it's right behind the entirety of that building and not necessarily separate. You know, there's a lot of clearing that is not necessarily right next to a building on the school lots. Right. Uh, so, I, yeah, and I guess I would say that, um, you know, there is and there isn't, right? So if it's snowing during the day, we're around, in and around on the loop road, in and around on the access road, throughout any kind of snow we're getting during the day. Um, in that, and in the parking lots. And in the parking lots, um, you know, with cars there, you know, so. Um, and then at the, you know, with this lot, there wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't expect there to be, you know, these big pieces of heavy equipment until they're doing the snow removal, which typically happens at night or on the weekends. Um, so I would say that um, it would probably, probably be just a plow truck in there, really just taking swipes at it, putting it to where we can get into a spot that we can then clear it up. Yeah, so it, that, that it does pose, I mean, it certainly does pose a question, too, because if you're not doing that snow removal piece, you are going to have to, you don't have room on that site. So you are going to have to find some place to so for a big say, storm, right? I would say that they're pretty good. I would I would say you know in my short time, my one winter here, it's always been within a week that they've removed snow from the schools, um, even with the challenges that they you know they've had you know with the late with the late snow we had this year, they they still uh, were there taking the snow out of the schools um, again at night and within the week that we've had the storm. Um, you know, that being said, what we would probably do is, I think we had a, we had allotted for a couple of extra bus spaces, and if we had to, we would probably use the, you know, the, the, the parking spaces for the cars, um, whatever made the most sense on, on, the, on the lot, and then remove it from there and have, you know, those people park, you know, in different lots at the school. So, you know, like with snow, we'd have to, everybody would have to accommodate for the snow. Um, I want to just take a, a couple of minutes to open and continue the 735 hearing and thank you very much Frank for making it possible. Um, so I'll enter, we just have another hearing that's supposed to start at 735 so procedurally we have to open it and continue it for a few minutes and then we'll wrap up with you guys. Great. Okay. Um, I'll entertain a motion to open and uh, to continue the 735 global uh, public hearing to um, you know, in, until the conclusion of this conversation. 
So moved. Is there a second? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Um, I think also procedurally, I missed a moment um, at 7.30. We should vote, have voted, and Kobe's giving me that FBI. Yep. We should have voted to continue the Buckland hearing. And where is that going? So they are requesting, they are requesting to continue to the 27th um, of August. And what time? So right now, we also had a couple things coming on Friday that got added to the 27th. Okay. So right now we have um, Wilson Street Solar at 745. Um, I put, we have a scenic road hearing that I put next, but that was by accident, so that needs a time as well. Okay. Um, we have a definitive subdivision plan from Wisp Way that's come in, that's for the 27th, and um, design review board appointments. And Zach. Okay. And Zach. That has to be added. Um, so um, I would entertain a motion to, so what, the only one that has a time so far is solar at 745? Correct. Okay, so I'll entertain a motion to continue the Buckland hearing until, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna ask you to do it again, to do it close to the 745 time, like 750, okay. in case neither of them have their materials by the um, ne necessary date and time of the 20th. I'm <laughs> just gonna, you know. Just saying. I'm just saying. It's been, a, it's been a thing. So if the materials are not in on the 20th, please let them know that we're gonna continue. I know that the solar the solar yeah, guys already know. know that, but let the Buckland folks know. Yep. So put them at 750 until both applicants, that that necessarily means they might uh, not, well, that tell Buckland that they may not start at 750. But if they are prepared that night, we will hear them that night. Okay, so, and then we don't have anything after that, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so Wilson Street, 745, Buckland, 750. Okay, and then we should do our appointments, I would say, at 9, and we should leave the last hour because it's two boards. Is there, is there a scenic road here? There is a scenic road here. Oh, here. oh. and a definitive subdivision. Oh, subdivision. yeah, I forgot about those little things. Okay. Um, well, let's at least put the um, let's put the appointments at nine, so we have a time certain. We are also meeting um, in a new place for the public to know and for everybody to be noticed. We'll be in the selectmen's meeting room, and we're hoping to be there going forward on our Monday nights. So we'll be in the selectmen's meeting room in the newly reopened town hall, second floor. Okay. Did we right. vote on? Uh, I'll entertain that motion, Dave. Yes, so moved. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. And we also need to extend the action date. Oh. Decision date to, uh, they, they had said September 28th, 2018. All right, are you comfortable putting that in your motion, Dave? The 2018 yeah, oh, yes. action date? Okay. Totally comfortable with that. All right, any discussion? All those in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, thank you. Whoops, sorry guys. Um, all right, so um, the school is not yet ready for um, a wrap up because uh, that you haven't you haven't finished with Concom either. Is that correct? We are I, ne I need you to come back because I'm sorry. All right. No, just so everybody at home can hear you. Yes. Yep. No, I appreciate that. Um, we're meeting with Concom next week. Um, um, I believe it's next week on the 30th or the 31st. Whatever their next meeting, we meet with Concom. So the hope would be that the planning board would be able to approve tonight and CONCOM would be able to approve next week. Okay. Um, what, are, what are people's thoughts on that? Because we don't really have beta's full comments, um, you know, final comments, and it, that would be a real leap for us, typically, outside of our process. I would agree with that. I think the other thing is oftentimes CONCOM decides Oftentimes their decision is first, and they bring that to the planning board, and then we make the, the final decision. More often than not, I don't know if that's a, that's so, a rule so of thumb. I would agree. Yeah. I, I apologize for speaking. Um, Concom felt that you're just because we're only very little in the buffer zone that you actually had larger jurisdiction of the site. Um, so I would agree with that for sure, but we don't have our final. 
um, engineers comments that though there isn't resolution on that um, so that's that's a bigger issue for us uh, although we really like to accommodate I have other boards that do have jurisdiction have, have signed off on it ahead of time um, I don't know what I just yeah. wanted to note that um, we had put in the memo a note from Dominic Adams the conservation agent regarding their um, view on the project so they had noted that they did not believe they had enough information to make an informed decision on whether the project met the DP stormwater standards the public here has continued in hopes that beta would be able to complete their review um, so that was just a note that the Dominic Adams wanted the board to be aware of I am just concerned if we continue to the 27th school will be starting that week I don't think it's possible okay. to continue yeah. to the 27th I agree with you yeah. um, so uh, I'm actually casting about for the board's appetite for meeting only on this um, for the night after CONCOM meets, which is August, August 1st. 1st day. So I'm out of town through the 3rd. Okay. Uh, can I speak? I've been a big proponent of local bus parking since um, I was on the Green Committee. We met with Dr. Landsman eight years ago on this. and. Um, so I'm a big fan. <laughs> we'll save hundreds of thousands of dollars each year in taxes and gas money, less pollution. The current location where the buses are parked are adjacent to a wetland and Ashland. And as a former conservation member, I know that we, they like to look at an improvement in a situation and for our town this would be an improvement in the conservation situation because 25, 26, 27 buses will no longer be next to a wetland in Ashland, they'll be near a little bit of a wetland in Hopkinton. Uh, so just, just as a point of fact, a huge, a huge wetland uh, area. Around it, but immediately, like right now in Ashland they're immediately tar, grass, fence, and then water. <laughs> um, for sake of getting this through, uh, I, I th do think we need more information. Uh, this is the first time we've actually talked about this. Mm -hmm. uh, no, second. Second. Okay, first I've been here for it. Um, I think that uh, Usually, the CONCOM makes a decision, then we make a decision based on all the other subcommittees and other lower committees or other departments like DPW and school committee, depending on things that are happening. And what if we conditionally approve this so that they could plan uh, to move forward if, and they can make plans now, as Amy was saying, they, they really can't make plans in August. And I usually don't like doing that, but since this is the town and we're all the same, we're all the same town, we're all striving for the same issues and we all have the same concerns, conservation, school, planning, um, I'm just wondering if we could. So I'm only going to speak for myself. We are already working as hard a press as we can work and being as patient as we can be. And, you know, we got plans tonight. We got beta comments that he worked on today, tonight. Um, that's already way past our comfort zone um, and we really need our engineers to be comfortable with the site um, so I'm I'm only speaking for myself I don't feel comfortable moving forward tonight and I definitely want um, to do whatever we can to accommodate your very tight schedule um, so I don't know how other people feel that's where so, I am. So I'm in the same camp as you right there's just too many variables that I think are not um, just 100% nailed down yet for me to be able to kind of make a decision one way or the other. But I, like Muriel, am very open to accommodating or moving schedules around to make this happen, understanding where you guys are at in terms of timeline. So I'm looking at August's schedule. Um, in order to have Amy here, we would have to meet on the 6th. Do you, do you need me here or do you have five votes? So we need five votes. Yeah. What? I can be here. Answer have another separate question. Oh, Sorry. so who can be here on the sixth anyway? Let me see. Let me well, see that. No, I thought you were suggesting the night after. Oh, the thirtieth. August first. Check that first. August first is a Wednesday. Can I check my phone? Yeah, you can check your phone. Oh, <laughs> we we discussed actually um, 
I was going to make an announcement. This is what was actually kind of new information for me, but using your smartphone at a public hearing can be considered a violation of open meeting law unless it's for you know calendar purposes or uh, something that um, is put into the public record as, for example, maybe a Google search on an item, but not interactions with other people. Um, so we're I'm just checking my calendar. I know everybody's <laughs> checking their calendar. <laughs> So I'm available the sixth. I'm not in town the first. Okay. I'm unavailable the first, and I'm out of town the sixth. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you can and us. I don't believe that you can vote, Frank, because you missed last meeting and you missed substantively the discussion this meeting. Yep. Unfortunately. So I'll be too. Hmm. How about you, Deb? What's your available the sixth? Right. The sixth. I'm good for either date. I'm good for either date. Oh, good, good for either both. date. Um, what's your preference? The first or the sixth? Well, the first, obviously. Okay. Preference um, that, did you have five? We will have five, right? Carol? Please. No. They can't oh, vote. They can't vote? No. no. Because Deb can't make it. You said I can I can make it. Raise your hand. Oh, okay. can. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll right have, can you make it on the first? First. One, two, three, so these five. are the five, five you need. Yep. Okay. Thank you, by the way, for everybody um, moving mountains. Now, the other question before you leave is we need a, a place, yes. certain, in order to be able to legally hold the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know of a space that's, I, I can't know without. Do you yeah, have I mean, a school space? We, we do we have a school you space? So you should, you should, you have to tell us where. It has to be a date and time. So we have to have a place certain. So you have to tell us where and then make it happen. Okay. So we can library. have it at, I'm sorry? High school library. Okay. Uh, the high school library. And it can be televised from there too, which is also very nice if, if H came is available to do that. What time? Okay. So what time, everybody? Seven? Seven. 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 All right. I will entertain a motion to continue this public hearing to seven o'clock. August 1st at the high school auditorium. Library. Um, at library. Library. library, thank you. Wow. <laughs> there, just that's how you lose it. Um, at the high school library. Um, and this is the only item we'll consider on that night. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you all for your flexibility. Thank you. Um, and then, seriously, um, Phil and the engineers all have to be um, on the same page. That's the key moving piece for us. Yes, we're aware of that. Okay. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. right. So, Madam Chair, I do need to leave around 9 o'clock. So. Okay. That's. You're going to miss all that discussion yeah. on uh, if you look at the Facebook page. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We're going to keep moving. Um, so I will entertain a motion to open the conversation on the, um, the minor project 84, 86, 88, 92 West Main Street, the Global Companies LLC. Moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So just as a reminder, there are only five voting members on this as well. So anybody who has joined us at the election or since the election is not a voting member, but very welcome to participate in uh, the conversation and the questions. So Frank, Muriel, Fran, Amy, and Dave are the voters on, on this one, and you need all five. Okay. Welcome back. Thanks for your patience. Good evening. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, the last time we were here, I think we kind of uh, went through and settled all on all the, the site plan and uh, uh, traffic issues. Uh, the remaining item from the viewpoint of the board's discussion was the hours of operation, and then of course waiting to make sure we were all set with other parties in town. So uh, the Conservation Commission has closed their hearing and in the process of issuing an order of conditions. Uh, we met with the design review board. Uh, they signed off on, on the final sets of plans. Uh, and then we met again with the zoning board of appeals that voted all the approvals we needed from their perspective. So uh, we're back uh, with everything that we need, I guess, in hand. 
to talk about any remaining issues. From the viewpoint of the hours of operations, I, I did a little background and looked to see kind of what's happening in the area. I think, as I mentioned, across the street, Cumberland Browns is 24 hours operation. Um, Price Chopper is, is a 24 hour operation. Uh, I could not find a decision on your Dunkin' Donuts, but I went back and looked at the minutes. Uh, and there was a lot of discussion from the viewpoint of the Dunkin' Donuts and particularly the time frame of 4.30 uh, and then ultimately comments that as there was nothing in the bylaw in regards to site plan review, which is what that is and what this is, uh, that there was no authority to, uh, to deal with hours of operation as part of that approval. So there's nothing in there. So uh, it, we are requesting 24 hours, seven days, and uh, as soon as I can shut off my phone. Yeah, that's bad for me, man. I'm just telling you. <laughs> Especially when you're making your case. But I digress. Lucky so if my old phone had the pack, Green Bay Packers ring on it. So <laughs> yeah, that would have been. That's uh, it. You're out. Deal breaker. So I mean, we're spending between the acquisition cost, the replacement of the building, the full replacement of all the tax, millions of dollars in this operation. We think it would just be an uh, unfair and, and uncompetitive issue for us not to have 24 hours when Cumberland Farms has it. If you don't travel on 495, you, you see up the road in Milford, there's a couple of gas stations, 24 hour service there as well. So uh, it, it's a real need given the amount of money we're spending to, to redo this facility. Uh, so I'm just going to speak for myself um, that uh, I understand all the points you're making. I'm also sensitive to the fact that if there was a 24 hour case to be made, it's probably there. Um, is the best case to be made. I don't think the case could have been made at Price Chopper and for me. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly the hours of operation at the Dunkin' Donuts couldn't have been made for me. I'd have been one voice on the board. I don't know how anything would have been decided. Um, it is entirely in our purview to consider the impact on the surrounding neighborhoods and residences. And hours of operation and lighting are part of that. So I, I just want to make sure that we're all on friendly terms having this conversation about hours of operation. I am fully respecting your position and your desire and your motivations and, and don't disagree with them. Um, but I do want to hear from um, other members of the board on this issue in particular. So it's, we probably, probably might as well just have the conversation now on how people feel about hours of operation in general and if if I can just add, yep. these are some photographs, aerial photographs of kind of our site. You'll see a red line going to the nearest residential, and you'll see between them and us a stand of trees, and then of course along West, West yeah, Main Street heading down towards town, there's no real residences on that side of the period of time. So we're over 300 feet away from the nearest residential that's buffered between us and them. Through the chair? Yes. I, I would just state that I, I stated this in the past and I, I felt that if you cross the street, open 24 hours, direct competition, that I, I support the 24 hours. Yeah, I, and, I, and I appreciate that. I understand that. I don't necessarily know that that's a compelling argument for me, but I, I totally respect it as, a, as an argument. Okay. How about anybody else? No, I agree with Dave. Yep. I, I think in this location, this is appropriate. Uh, I wrestle with it, quite frankly. I wish there was a overall moratorium. I mean, this is just speaking from one person, from 12 o'clock to 5 o'clock. And I live by about 300 yards. About 300 yards so away I'm from the very country. cognizant. <laughs> uh, but um, I, I will kind of echo what Dave and Amy said. I think, um, you know, in this case, because it has been done before for additional, for other, um, Businesses that would put you guys, I think, at a bit of a competitive disadvantage in that case. So I'm sympathetic. I am as well. I'll just go um, around this way. Yeah, I, I guess I still have some questions about. Um, I, I'm in support of the 24 hours, but I do have some questions about the overall height of the structure and the light. Um, that that it, I don't. So we will believe, get to that. Yeah, I just we, I just want to say yep. that. Yep. I'm in support of 24 mm -hmm. hours. I don't see any reason why not. I am leaning, I agree a lot with what Fran said. Um, we've seen a lot of projects over the years. I'm a little bit leery of, uh, at this point, being asked this question. Um, there are benefits to 24-hour operations uh, for the town, and there's a detriment 
uh, because it's a slippery slope once we start expanding how many 24-hour operations there are, uh, there could be more people that are asking. Um, the original hours of, the, of this location um, are the original, are the hours that you currently have. Um, I think that if we were to give this leeway, I view it as leeway, um, I would like to see something in return that could benefit the town or the planet. And I'm going to suggest solar panels because you guys are an energy company and you're sitting there day or night. There are between 8 and 20 hours of sunshine a day and you have a big roof you put it up and you can put solar panels up there. I feel a lot better about you guys doing that and being open 24 hours. And if you just open 24 hours and not doing that, I'd be, what do you guys care? You're just in it for the money. You want to be open as long as you can to make as much money as you can. And I'm not necessarily against that. Um, but I have some concerns about other locations and um, I feel a little bit better as time goes on. But I don't want to give away too much of the small town nature of our town. So I don't want to give away something without getting something in return. All right. I agree with much of what uh, Fran and um, Muriel have said that, you know, I wish, I wish we didn't have as much 24 hour, but um, I think it's appropriate in this case. Anybody else want, want to throw in, Mrs. DeBerg, first meeting? <clears throat> I'm just curious, the, the trees that you referenced that are buffering that that closest residence, are they? Um, it looks like they're like half on that property and half on the commercial property next to it. Are they evergreens or are they well, all going to, you know, do you have any idea? Aerial, I okay. couldn't tell you. They're, they're not evergreens, Carol. Like, they're just regular deciduous maples okay. or oaks or something. So they're not necessarily going to screen, twice screen anything. Time, yeah. time you're going to see it. Do you have final thoughts on the 24-7 question? I think it's hard to say no to them if, if there's competition is, has that ability. I have a question. Um, yeah. If the town desired to put a moratorium and not allow 24-hour businesses, is that something that could be done in the future via a zoning change, or mm -hmm. it is? That it, it would be an appropriate conversation for okay. our Zach to undertake. <laughs> and it probably should be a big conversation because it, it is something that, um, to the best of my knowledge, has not really been... Um, it been uh, vetted. discussed and vetted. Yeah. Um, at least it, I, I was the chairman of you know the past iteration of the master plan. I don't have any recollection of that conversation or, importantly, um, spontaneous feedback. And we got a lot of spontaneous feedback in that particular cycle. Um, doesn't mean it wasn't there. I just don't remember it rising to that. Yep. So, so, so I, I struggle to deny them 24 hours when their competition does. But given this is this is rural business, right? Rural business to me is not 24 mm -hmm. hours. So I know I realize that's a a zoning issue, but but to me that's something that I would prefer to take up with the uh, zoning advisory committee. Yeah, I mean technically it could either be a zoning amendment or just a general bylaw that the town could adopt, which mm -hmm. then of course we would need the two thirds of the town meeting, just the majority. No, we learned our lesson this this past year. With that. <laughs> Muriel, just a quick follow up. Still Hold on right one now. second, Mary. Mary first, and then I'm coming. And I was just commenting on um, what Gary had proposed, but the zoning bylaws would only affect future. Yes. That's true. Yeah. It that's would not true. affect existing that's, businesses. That's so true. I just wanted to raise that. That's true. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Zoning changes only affect going forward. Just a comment. Frank was looking for a little quid pro quo. Um, you can take it that the um, moving the retention ponds and going underground would be a quid pro quo. To, I mean, that's something that we. You know, we asked them to do it. They said yes. We're already losing a historical home. Just, now. just a comment, suggestion. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so uh, just to put this uh, to rest, um, I, I, I had made a commitment to myself that unless there was an overwhelming support of restricting the hours, that, that it wasn't going to keep me from voting in favor of this. So in my mind, the hours of operation is settled. 
um, unless anybody had anything else. I did want to ask a question though. Are you have you signed whatever you needed to sign in order? Okay, just wanted to make sure we no. Oh, no. oh you did. Oh, you did. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Um, okay. Um, Uh, I also appreciate that you have done as, I believe, as much as you can in, on this site to contain your light. Um, it's, also, uh, it's also a facility that is driven by the need for light, so it is a bigger impact in my mind on that side of the road. Um, and um, I wouldn't be averse to something positive coming out of this for the town, as Mr. Durso mentioned. Um, as I look at, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, to that point to the chair, is that a possibility? What Mr. Durso proposed with the solar panels? Solar panels? Hi, I'm Daniel Archibald Partners, and senior project manager for construction department. We are working with a company called Renown. We've been given a $75,000 grant uh, to install solar panels in a charging system at that site. Uh, we're working with them right now giving them electrical loads for an equivalent site to see if we can make this work. We're actually using, looking to use battery storage on site. So it's not selling back to the power right. company, it's actually battery storage. So we are working with them right now. It's not to say that it's guaranteed. We gotta see if we can make it work. But we do have a grant for that as well. I guess that's a good start. <laughs> I, I truly appreciate that. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm not sure how that language is baked into a decision if it yeah. if it is you know if we're <laughs> if we're hopeful <laughs> but it's not I guess it's you know in this case uh, correct me if I'm wrong in this case it doesn't go in as a condition because um, we can't um, we can't you know we can't force it we can't guarantee it um, but it would be uh, it would go a long way to soothing um, some of our concerns about the the movement that we feel we're taking on that particular site to, to the chair. Yes. Um, I do have some concern about solar panels. Um, I'm not really sure how high the parapet is on that roof. Would they be exposed or would they be concealed? They are. They're actually going to go, they're right now being proposed on the canopies, which is a flat deck. So oh, on the yeah, um, not, um, gas. There's not enough room on the roof building. You know, with the HVAC units <laughs> and the slope of the roof. Mm -hmm. so, are the okay. HVAC units going to be concealed? It'd be concealed on the back. Okay. Yeah. And that's what that parapet is for, yeah. Yeah. that high roof. So it's actually the roof is quite a bit. Correct. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Um, I am just looking at my um, outline. I'm uh, checking off the Board of Appeals because we know that that, is, that process is in place. Um, I think that we have discussed site plan standards and plan revisions, but are, are there any other? Um, you had said that you had some questions or concerns, Deb. Go on. Yeah. Um, I find the um, the pictures, um, oh, the, the perspectives, the really nice perspectives, by the way, um, a little bit decept deceptive because they try to show like what the night scene is, but it's really not showing what the backlighting is uh, in the building itself. Um, and I'm I'm still a little concerned about. Um, the tower, um, not necessarily the halo lighting. That's not. That's kind of nice, actually. Mm -hmm. But the lighting that comes behind, um, that's glass. I'm wondering if, if if there's any potential that we could obscure that, or or not necessarily have glass. Not it have could be glass, thing. but it could be obscured glass. Something that would mute it versus make it show. The which glass? Um, in the entryway, well, uh, all along um, the, the front facade, but, mm -hmm. but mostly in the tower um, along here, there's, there's a, um, glazing right behind that blank spot. Um, so what, what's going to happen is the light's going to filtrate right all the, all the way up. Um, and my thought is that um, that's going to show more than the perspectives show. So. Just my thought on that, though. I mean, so that may not look as desirable at night, but to me, that's a whole lot nicer during the day because it's letting more natural light in the building and it's just creating a, a more open feel to the establishment. Yeah, um, there are different types of uh, glass. No, it's not a right. 
I, I'm a little torn that way. But um, there are different types of obscure glass that can be purchased that go right in the same framework um, that's obscure and may not show. And so it would be, it'd be nice to know what kinds of options we have there. Okay. Uh, David A. we're going to be a senior designer for Pool Partners. Um, to understand a little bit about the inside of the store and the lighting that's in there, it's an exposed structure that's darkened out, very dark, almost charcoal gray. Uh, the lighting that is up there is focused and directed to create pools of light on the floor. It is not the blow up light in both directions. So any surfaces that you would see through the windows would really be, from that perspective, looking up to what would be a painted, nearly black ceiling. So there'd oh, be very little light. So they're cone lights that direct down? That's correct. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Right. All right. That was my question. Thank you very much. Um, and then to the point, should we talk about the, the basins? Everything's on the table because we're hoping to okay. wrap it up. Okay. So then I have a little bit of questions about the wetlands on the left. If you're facing the building on the left-hand side, parking of the parking lot. Mm -hmm. yes. um, I noticed that there was a letter that had addressed that. And I'm just wondering, what can we do to mitigate damage to that wetland? Um, in part, and throughout its li the building's lifetime. Yeah, I mean, that's all broad, and Jesse did a lot of time with the calling call on that, so he can make it. Jesse Johnson, Bowler Engineering, the civil consultant for the applicant. So we did spend a lot of time uh, with conservation. That was brought up as a concern. Uh, we did a couple extra things uh, into the design to, to help with that, one of them being that we have to put a demarcation on the site to indicate where the edge of the top of the berm is for the basin, and then uh, behind it where the wetlands are. So essentially telling people that are maintaining that basin, this is as far as you go, don't cut anything beyond this, because we actually have plantings, restoration plantings proposed on the back side of that berm with a conservation seed mix to try to mitigate as much of that as we can. And that's to replace pavement that's there now, and also a substandard uh, sediment four bay that's really not operating the way it should. So that's all coming out, and we're going to replace it with with good vegetation, uh, something that's, that you want to see next to a wetland. And then we'll have that, I believe it's a strip, split rail fence. Mm -hmm. Split rail fence at the top of the berm that I'll say you can't go any further. And then in the basin itself, that's going to have to be mowed and maintained. I don't know if that answered your question, but that's. No, that's great. Thank okay. you. Um, I, I guess the other question I have is when you do snow removal, um, do you have any guidelines as to how much salt you use or where the, what, what you're, what you're going to use as your chemical compound and what the effect of that would be to that area? So we do have, the, there's actually state guidelines for snow removal and snow maintenance on sites, especially in sensitive areas. Uh, we put that in our operation and maintenance plan so that anybody taking care of the site after that have to follow those guidelines or at least are aware of that. So they're certainly going to hire some contractor that's going to maintain all the plowing operations and sanding and salting. Um, the good thing about this site is we do have oil grit separators because it is a gas station. We had to put those in. We have those, uh, two of them actually, for very small areas that are contributing to them. They're way oversized. So we have two oil grit separators. Uh, and then we have a long treatment train of a shallow sediment four bay. Where, where, I'm sorry, where, where are they? <coughs> Just off the pavement, um, almost adjacent to both the, the ingress into the site and the exit out the back side. They look like small rectangles on the plane set, if you can find those. So they are near the wetlands? Those are going to be the first line of defense, if you will. So the stormwater will come off the pavement and go directly into those in their chambered system. So it has to go through three chambers of settling, of separating oil if it captures any ingredient, and then it'll discharge into a sediment forebay that will have uh, that will have stone dams, if you will, that will stop that runoff again to slow it down, promote further settlement of any particulate matter, and then it'll ultimately go to uh, the basin, which will be lined, uh, because we didn't have proper separation of groundwater, we actually are going to be lining that basin with an impervious barrier to protect the groundwater as another further measure uh, before it overspills uh, towards the wetland area where everything goes now. Oh, great. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. Does any uh, board member have any final questions? 
Do we, we don't have any members of the public, I don't believe, but speak now. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, I think we, we've come to the point, um, I've, I've been thinking about the um, solar panel grant battery storage <laughs> real time um, so I just wanted to like to put some language in it that we appreciate the applicants commitment to fully explore the possibility of solar panels and a electric store uh, electric yeah, charging electric station um, on site uh, that, that you know the, the study is ongoing and just put that language in there but there's no commitment that yeah. it becomes a reality is that that's comfortable okay um, is that comfortable? Yeah. Go ahead. Just, um, can I confirm that the utilities it says will be screened from the ground? So assume, we're assuming that the solar panels, if there are any, would be also screened from the flat, ground. Flat, flat right. on them. They're going to go on the can. Okay. So we don't need to change that condition to be included, right? Yeah. If they're not visible, and if they're bringing back, yeah. like they wouldn't be. They wouldn't be obtrusively visible flat. You said on top of the canopy. No. And if they, um, if they were going to have a charging station, they would come back for minor site plan because we didn't oh yeah if the charging station is a physical if it's not also screened from view it would have you guys would have to come back for that minor revision just for a minor this is this is just this is a minor by the way okay. this whole thing is minor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this whole thing is minor. I I'm gonna get around the table yeah. I promise go ahead Dave uh, just a quick question about the solar panels and the screening so I've never seen maybe I'm I don't get out enough but I've never seen panels go flat they're always slanted toward the sun. So the canopies by design are already slanted. It's just part of the unique character of okay. our design for the canopies. So it's in our favor as it is that the panels themselves can lay flat and because of the architecture they're, they're tilted by nature. So, so they won't stand so the wow. through, yep, yeah. no, through you through the chair. Just which yes. where are they currently slanted? Which direction? They're tilting backwards to the Truth. property off of Maine. So they go away from West Maine. Up. So to the east. Yeah. So the higher end is north. Higher end is on the north. To the north. Hmm. I'm sure it would work really well with well, Elm Street. But anyway, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll find that out when you work it's, with those. <laughs> well, it's a, because of the, the openness of the space and the way the sun travels. It's right, right, right. Now yeah, maybe you're getting some western sun there. Mm -hmm. Okay, good luck. I was just curious. So, <coughs> Chair, I had, I had one more question. Um, I think you've, you've done a wonderful job, and um, I think it's really come a long way. Mm -hmm. So I want to congratulate you. I do want to ask you, though, because I remember in, in some of our initial conversation, we had talked about the canopy, and you had said it wasn't structurally sound enough to carry um, solar equipment. I just want to make sure that it's reinforced um, appropriately at the time prior to installation, whether you get the grant or not, that it can carry the weight. Yes, oh. of course. We're working with the engineers on that. We're waiting for final design of what we need for panels on top of there to make it work. So, so even though we have a package, there is going to be modification to the package. There's engineering plans that need to be submitted for building permit that we have an engineer stamp on it for the road calculations for the Canopy and solar panels. So maybe the wording we may want to put in there is that structurally we wouldn't want any deviation that we've changed from what's been presented today to be to be accepted at, at the building department level. Yeah, I mean you can reference per code and, and we have to meet it. Right. I don't I, I, I don't think we have to put that in the decision. No. Um, no. Okay. No, they you know they have to if, the, if their little stations collapse, it's, you know, that's a bad result. <laughs> I'm just saying. But we also don't want them to be obtrusive and... No, I agree. I agree. Uh, so visually, and uh, that, that, you know, that we explore the opportunity fully to install them and that they are visually not more uh, intrusive is important to the planning board. Um, that they are structurally sound is important to us all, I'm sure. Do you have anything else on me? Yeah. I'm good. Anything else, Dan? No. Frank. I'm very encouraged to hear about the plans and the grant, um, but I'm still reluctant to sell out 24 hour to a business that this is another business. Um, so I'm wondering what else you got for us. <laughs> but, uh, we'll try our best. 
Good luck. I have nothing further. I'm all set. Um, if this is approved, I hope the store is as nice as you say it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Spend a lot of time in these little convenience type stores, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, so we should go over the conditions. Is this the same that we had in So iPad? the one that's been printed, I, uh, there was one minor addition um, that I added on there that um, Mr. Barberi, had, once when we reviewed these at the last meeting, he, we had talked about um, one of the conditions. I apologize. No, it's okay. There's one of I know, right? <laughs> Which one was it? Page. I apologize. Oh, yeah, so the uh, standard O, talking about the adequate access for the emergency, the old one had said can you, fire. Can you tell me where you are? Oh, oh. There standard O, it's on the oh, third thank page. You. Yep. Um, okay, go ahead. Q code O. Yeah, the old one had said fire should comment in regards to access. Fire has commented, um, and ah, they are also. Thank you. So okay. I wanted to clarify that. On a site plan standard O, the, the adequate access shall be provided to each structure for emergency vehicles and personnel. I had a couple questions just in reviewing um, Beta's comments and the original draft. By the way, Georgia, I would like to say um, these draft decisions and conditions are really helpful, okay. especially each meeting as it iterates. It's really helpful, okay. so we appreciate that a lot. Okay. Um, uh, the con uh, beta recommended an emergency procedure plan be provided for the record in their comments. So it's not he it's not in this oh, not draft in decision. No, I'm sorry. Uh, these are things that I noticed in reviewing the materials coming into tonight. Yeah. Um, beta had re recommended the emergency procedure plan be provided for the record. Is there any problem including that? No, because uh, your your fire department has a real extensive code from viewpoint mm -hmm. board reporting and all those things. So okay. Um, so that's that's agreeable. Um, just because it was said, and I know we talked about it a lot, um, Beta recommended a condition for this to make ensure that the sign in the island that instructs left turn onlys, or is there? Right, right, right turn only. Right I knew I was trying to One of the things right? we, we submitted right. the right. revised standing right. sign. Yeah. It, it yeah. simply has a, a, a lower yeah. light yeah. onto the light, so there's no, no lights within in and of itself. That was, I think, the question. No, no. So no, I know it's here. They had recommended <laughs> that um, you particularly ensure that it doesn't. The positioning of it does not impede uh, particularly emergency vehicle turning maneuvers. I just wanted to make sure. We, I didn't think you'd have any objection to that and, and had, had already thought of it, but I wanted to specifically include it. That just reminds me. It says uh, right turn only between 7 and 9 a.m. and 4 to 6 p.m. Were those the recommended hours by the emergency department? I think rush hour still goes a little bit past six. I'd almost go seven. Where, where seven. are you now? What was that? Yep. Right the hours for the right turn only. It says four to, four to six p.m., but I think rush hour. Time that's time. on the westernmost exit. Right. 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 There's there's no, no right turn at all. You're, there's you're only right turn. Right. 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 So you're questioning the seven to nine, four to six. I was wondering if it should be four to seven, unless the emergency personnel recommended four to six. Important. Judges? I'm comfortable with four to six. Just a two hour slot. I'd go four to seven. I'd, I'd go longer as well. I think there's just too much. Longer traffic. the better. Three, it, it's three, it's three. I I I'll be quite candid with you. I choose what gas I buy depending on the direction I'm driving. Mm -hmm. That's how I that's how I manage that particular intersection. If I'm going out of town, I get it there, and if I'm coming in, I get it on the <laughs> other side of the street. I don't cross. Um, so I'm I'm more comfortable with four to seven as well. Is that in which number are you reading? You, it is I, I on top of the next page, just above standard J, is the sign that's on the westernmost exit of the site, seven to nine in the morning, four to seven at night, for the right turn only between those hours. Is that amenable? That's the worst. Yeah, that's fine. Right. No problem. Okay. Um, okay. There so it's on that we have it on the site plan. So I want to, if that time is the time written on the site plan, because yeah. I thought it referenced an exact time on the site plan. Oh, I 
good on the site, but I, we only do that because that's typical traffic hours where traffic studies being done. Those are the peak hours in the morning and the afternoon. So we reference the same times that you'd see from a traffic report. Okay. Is there any problem changing it to seven? No, I, I could have made it to just have I mean, it up it's, yes. The vote of the board. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So seven is better for, for our purposes. Um, can I just can I just ask if you the um, seven a.m. is adequate for the board, or is six it's, more adequate? It's awfully busy at seven a.m. there. No, that, but I'm saying should it be moved back? I know. To I, I understood your question. Yeah, I, yeah, I no. think so as well. And I even think possibly three p.m. even earlier. We get so much traffic. So number one. It's rush hour. Let's rush hour is expanded <laughs> on West Main. You know. Yeah. You know, it's really what we wanted, but let's let, we're trying to we're trying to work here. Um, <laughs> so, I just want to know from uh, the board's perspective: six to nine or seven to nine? Seven to nine is what the applicant has requested. I go seven to nine. I'm okay with seven to nine, but I'm not usually there at six a.m. to nine. I go six a.m. I have a preference for six a.m. too. There's five voting members. Let's let's find out how that falls out, Frank. Um, from what I remember of the incident reports from there in the morning, I think mean, mostly in the afternoon, I might be incorrect, but I'd be okay with um, having them no left turn between six and nine, so changing it to six to nine. All right, right. Yes. And the three for six. I, I prefer okay. six as well. I'm fine with that. So it's going to be six to nine. Right. Yes. Um, all right. There is um, a proposed, uh, so all of the ones that you had an opportunity to review. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just looking, I'm just running through my list of the ones from beta. Um, they recommended a road safety audit. Did we talk about that? So that would be with ZBA, because they did traffic, ZBA requested the traffic analysis, correct, Peter? Which number are we? Uh, so Which it's, it's I apologize, it's from oh. Beta's letter in review, so it's not necessarily yeah. on here, it's not there yet. Yeah. So they recommended a road safety audit if expected safety improvements are not realized. And, and my question was, what would trigger that? I, so I think the report from Beta was to do with the an audit, but not necessarily that we would then be obligated to do any work. We would take objection to us having to do anything, whether we do any audit. Or but you don't story. have an objection to doing the audit. And, and I think I think we'd agree able to do the audit if, if it was really determined it was needed. Yeah. Not just. Well, that was my additional question: is what right. could we agree would trigger that audit if that's if that's something that's going to happen? So the D, the ZBA included that in their approval. In their decision, so that is already baked so into the, their all decision. the traffic. The traffic, and I could read these to you if you want. No, no, but do you, can you just tell us what triggers the um, the audit? Safety improvements are not realized after implementation of the proposed changes. That's really what the condition states. So, so I don't know what the trigger would be either. I I, I mean, certain number of accidents. Did anyone else I I watched. Is it some standard on which you would do it? I just think, in all fairness, for you and us, wouldn't you want to have some measure that triggered the necessity yeah, of the right. audit? I don't think that Jason Adams from McMahon Associates. I I don't think that the specifics of this came up in the CBA no. in terms of what that trigger would be. I don't think they had any discussion to that. So um, I think typically in this type of situation, you'd potentially review crash history at a certain period of time after opening. And that would probably serve as a trigger. And I'd, again, it's difficult to say what that specific trigger is. If it's, <coughs> you know, X number of crashes that would occur from the site driveway or something like that. But that's, that's I think typically, if you were trying to quantify mm -hmm. a trigger, it would probably be after the, the project has been uh, built and occupied and operating as proposed some amount of time in the future that would allow for conditions to settle. So would mm -hmm. some amount of time be six months or would six it be months, a year? Six months, 12 months, um, probably the two most common okay. time periods that we, we could okay. complete a review of just the... 
Right, yeah, right. Right. that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Do a full and cycle of seasons. Wasn't, that was wasn't consistent, you know. Right, so if there was no Phenomenal. change in, in crash history and safety performance, uh, that wouldn't be a trigger for the, the road safety audit. If, if we did see that there was something happening, we could. Because, yeah. I mean, doing the full gamut of safety audit is very expensive. You do the study, and if you're consistent with what you projected, you know, that's yeah. all you can hope for. No, I think that that is reasonable. I'm just, I, I'm trying to quantify it for purposes of putting it in a decision that's fair in both directions and and enforceable if we get into, you know, a conversation about it going down. Mm -hmm. um, so um, is the planning board amenable to um, asking for a status update in 12 months on whether or not the audit is needed from both the the applicant the and the public safety officials, we could ask both to weigh in on that. I don't, I'm, so I'm I'm to check. It. Yeah, I, I was. You said to, in 12 months, and I would say 12 months after. after yes. Operation. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. After opening up. Yeah. 12 months of operation. Yeah. Yes. I'm excellent though. I would say in the, in the interest of safety that um, we do look at this project and. Hopefully, we'll meet all the metrics of lower metrics of both more safety, less accidents, uh, smoother traffic, and there's other improvements right. that will be going on right. in that intersection that are beyond your control. Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully, this will be a good uh, indicator of us making the right decisions and, and them them making the right decisions. So, so just Georgia, from the wording to the chair, yes, from please. the wording perspective, it would be after 12 months from opening that they would do a review or analysis comparing actual versus what was projected right. and if there's a deviation from that that would trigger the audit because what triggers the audit i'm trying to determine what's going to actually trigger that audit for you yeah. i think what mayor so was the saying audit have them come back to us well that's what i mean come yeah, back with an exactly analysis with the, right some comparative, and then make a comparative analysis mm -hmm. i'm with it does that, does that make sense um no. unless i mean just not to overstate the obvious unless there is some result that that necessitates an audit. There's an egregious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, but that would be, I, I would imagine that that feedback would come from our public well, safety officials, and that. we would have to respond to that. I guess the, the the question we have is whether kind of this condition is consistent with either when Cumberland Finals was redone or when Duncan Donuts was redone. Doesn't it actually doesn't matter. We're talking about yours right now, not theirs. Mm -hmm. So thanks for that. Um, uh, I, I do want to be fair. Mm -hmm. um, it is a concern that you are um, expanding the site and traffic is moving so close to that intersection. And we have, you have worked very hard with us, mm -hmm. and we, I believe, have worked very hard with you. So I think yeah. that we're uh, it's all friendly here. We want to be fair about this, but this is a this is a condition that has been proposed by our uh, engineering mm -hmm. team, and would be hard pressed to ignore it. Yeah, I think if you work it whatever the number of months you determine that, that we do a study and then everybody compares the two and if there's things that show discrepancies at a significant level with safety personnel in, in, within the town say so you should do an audit then you know we do it but again no obligation from, from our perspective because we don't know For whether those corrective, results are corrective action right? right yeah we understand that you are kind of taking on something that is um, substantially um, beneficial to Mm -hmm. the town in, in considering that intersection in its entirety. Um, that's fair to me. I think so. I think 12 months is the number. Yeah. Yep. I think 12 months, but also no if. Definitely a, definitely a re review because it could be showing good numbers. I mean, and I think that it's important that we're doing planning and we're trying to do planning and that we have results that we could look at, solid results to say, well, we worked hard with the, with them, and they worked hard with us, and they worked with the DPW, and it, and this study shows that these improvements really were effective. So I definitely want to see this audit. I mean, no if ands of us. Well, so the audit is not guaranteed. So just to be clear, I want to make sure, Frank, um, the audit is is considered as potentially necessary after a review at tw at twelve months after operation. Right, we're going to do right. some sort of comparative analysis yeah, with your team. Yeah, it's consistent to working as we projected. Ex exactly. So the need for the audit. an expensive audit isn't something that I would feel um, right about laying at your feet unless for some reason we were showing a trend that was troubling. Yes, I would agree with that. Is that, we understood? 
I like I like to see it no matter what. It, it's it's a, it's a pat on the back. You know, re, you know, these are statistics that uh, these are metrics that show that these improvements were effective and traffic is flowing much better and safety is improved in that intersection, which is our goal, which is your goal. Uh, it's a shared goal we have. I like to see it backed up with numbers and, and a little bit of research. Um, I'm gonna. Um, I'm so, sorry, we have to. Um just suspend conversation for a moment. Nope, is that right? Yes. And uh, take a motion to open and continue the 8.30 public hearing, minor project after the fact at 52 South Street. Make a motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So, uh, and any opposed or abstentions? Okay, thank you. I don't even know if that happened in this hearing. Yeah. So, if I may, yes, um, it sounds like there's there's confusion between the concept of the analysis and then the audit, and then there would be a third step that's potential is corrective action, which you know is kind of off the table. But that's uh, so so an analysis is what compared to an audit. Can we be clear on that? Could could I speak to that? Yes, you um, absolutely. So the the road safety audit is a formal program that brings together all the, the stakeholders, MassDOT, town officials, um, regional officials. So it, it's a very formal process, which has a lot of involvement to it. Um, what we would propose to do, no matter what, in, in order to understand uh, the safety impacts, would be to review uh, the most recent crash data from the town, uh, from the state, to understand um, the, the number of incidents that were occurring previously compared to the number of incidents occurring 12 months after opening the new store. So, so either way, that level of analysis would be completed. Uh, we could compile that into a uh, data table and a report with our recommendation, which we could share with the, the town safety officials to determine if the formal road safety audit would then be needed. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's perfect, yes. right, Frank? I just like to have it either way. I just there are increasing visits per day, so it's increasing traffic in that area. But the improvements they've planned and we've worked with them on should help improve the flow of traffic. And then independently of their project, we have other traffic improvements going on in that area. And it'd just be nice to have a, a, a touchstone report that says, an audit that says, this is what it is now. This is what it was in 2000. 17 or whenever you guys started planning on this and this project has improved safety XYZ percent or maybe there's something there is outliers and there's a huge accident one year God forbid and maybe these are reasons why because maybe the flow of traffic went in the right turn onto Lumber Street is conflicting with something else coming from Lumber Street extension when they, people come around the corner maybe there's another issue that we don't know we're not aware of I'm sure analysis will reveal this, but I like to see the formal, the audit be a formal part of the project. And so, um, I, I just want to. I'm hoping that we can bring you around because I personally feel that that is an onerous requirement, um, and not at all what our engineers suggested. Um, we asked for. Um, so that's that's my my feeling on that, and I think that. Um, I agree. It would be nice to have. There are many things I can think of tonight that would be nice to have, but it's not necessarily fair. Um, in this, speaking for myself, it's not necessarily fair to lay a very structured, expensive audit on an applicant if we don't have some substan substantive data that suggests it's actually necessary. It might be nice to have, but is it absolutely necessary? Um, and I think that that's a key question, to be honest with you. So I'll just echo those comments to some degree. Especially with the full audit, what I heard was that now you're bringing in additional stakeholders, right, for something that may not necessarily be required if the analysis shows you know, what we think it's going to show that it aligned with what their projections were. So I think you still have that always in your back pocket, Frank, to do an audit if you want to. But I think in this case, to burden these guys or the applicant with mandating a full audit at this point. I hear what you guys are saying. Hold on, hold on. Let everybody speak, please. Did anybody else want to? I just would suggest that we move on to another item. Well, well we need five votes. Yep. And there's five voters. Okay. So that it is substantively okay. necessary to bring everybody along. Okay. 
So I'm comfortable with the traffic impact analysis first and then pull out if necessary Same. later. I agree. I, 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 I agree. Okay. And around the board, it, non I'm just I'm just wondering, can you just have a, a first vote on that one option that would just be a majority? A straw vote. Oh, a majority vote on that as well. On that so one condition, for, can you do that? I, I guess I guess I would make an impassioned plea to take the same, um, essentially the same argument to take the same uh, perspective that I took on the twenty the twenty four seven operation. If the members around the table didn't support my position in the majority, I had committed to myself that I was. It's not. It's not up to me to make it exactly correct for me. It's, this is a, a process and a board decision. So I'm hoping, Frank, that you can see your way forward to move forward knowing that most of us um, are happier and more satisfied with an evaluation after 12 months of operation and a, a full out audit only if it's necessary. Phil's not here and Chief's not here. Um, but from my perspective on safety, um, if there's any lives lost, this isn't this. We're saying we're, not, we're asking them to do an analysis of their projects and their numbers and give us feedback. And from the town's perspective, we have the chief's numbers um, and report through the state, as he's pointed out. Um, but I would like to have something official that we can have that's. Object, an audit is objective. If it's not run by them, it's not run by us, it's run by a third party, uh, objective party, that will put together a report. And we're talking about human lives that are being affected by the additional traffic, the changes to the traffic patterns that we're talking about. And I would just feel better having an independent view, which is an audit, of the situation, definitely part of, of, of this. Well, I mean, you can have, you had Beta review his original report. I wouldn't think it would be much to have Beta review that subsequent and give you a report that says, yeah, it's consistent and therefore. We have Beta's review of the analysis. If I, if I can oh, hold say on, something Hold on, hold on. I'm hoping to move forward, actually. Um, well, Beta Thank you for works, that suggestion. works for the town, mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. And they're, in, they're well, as they do objective now. as they are. Uh, but who's going to pay for that report in the future? And that's we'll pay for the review, beta's review of our this, subsequent report. Of this twelve month review. And that's a condition. Can we write that yeah. as a condition? Yeah. So the traffic impact analysis will be reviewed by beta, right? Before yeah. before determining whether we need to do an audit. That wording sounds fine. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so Beta also said, I feel a little, I feel a little. How long is your list over there? <laughs> 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 she starts turning over papers. <laughs> I got a little trickle of sweat going down the back of my neck. I'm just saying. Um, so uh, Beta also suggested as a condition, and I believe we talked about this too, so I'm hoping people can help me with this, um, implementing a traffic signal timing following construction and occupancy. That's in the ZBA decision. Okay. And what does it say? The applicant shall implement adjusted traffic signal timings following the construction and occupancy of the subject property. The signal timing changes shall be made in coordination with the Hopkin Department of Public Works. Okay. I'm satisfied that it's taken care of in the Board of Appeals decision. Thank you. Um, and then... What number is that? That's, that that's in the ZBA number. decision. Uh, she just oh, read it's in included ZBA in the ZBA, so it's not going into here. Yep. Okay. Um, then there was a suggestion. So there, there were issues on that site with the stormwater um, management inspections and maintenance. So um, I'm really comfortable and advocating for this condition that Beta suggested was requiring the owner to provide annual reports signed and stamped by a civil engineer uh, attesting to the inspections and maintenance um, that were completed for that year. Yeah. Might be a condition from. So I could speak to that. That was, I haven't seen the order conditions, but that was also put in um, the last public hearing that that was going to be part of their conditions. Of the uh, concon. Yes. Uh, and that's their standard procedure. From okay. what I understand, is to awesome. make everybody do that. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. That's that's my list. <laughs> <laughs> 
I did have one. Yes. Trivial, trivial little thing under uh, M, sidewalks. So it said that waving sidewalks along West Main Street. Now I knew we were doing Elm Street. Isn't there, is there already a sidewalk on West Main Street? We propose a portion along the front and then come into the site. So it's not the full width of West Main, it's about half of it. There's a section yeah, the in the middle. It's front of our building the that's shown on the plan. Did, mm -hmm. There'd be walking space. It's, okay. pa it's page nine on the plans. So there are some sections that yeah. won't be sidewalks. Okay. It's, it's, there. There. it's really looking for clarity. Yeah, no, perfect. I appreciate sure. that. But David, to your point, if I may, to the chair. Yeah. Um, Earlier, we had a question about the, the Elm Street uh, side of it, uh, and that would be a grassy area where people be walking along the back of the building. Could be. We, we put in the sidewalk to the entry and then carry it, and then the sidewalk go all the way across the back and then back out. Right? But not across the wetlands right. portion. Right. right. Is that right. correct? Yeah. Just between the two entrances, right? Yes from extending from the Lumber Street extension and across the back, but stopping at the exit, most westerly exit mm -hmm. on Dallas Street. Okay. Um, all right. Um, I am counting on the fact that you took the notes on those conditions. Um, so I'm not going to repeat those, but they're going to appear in your conditions. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to run through this for the uh, public's benefit. Um, in view of the foregoing, oh, I did have one more question. Um, what is um, a performance guarantee that makes sense? So the for the minor, it's usually five to ten thousand. So it's up to the boards. So that's discussion. under standard R. Correct. The applicant shall provide a performance guarantee in the amount of. So I'm going to recommend 10,000, mm -hmm. um, just because it, while this is a minor plan, it's a pretty big project um, in my mind. That sounds I'm good. Agree. And it comes back to you if you don't, if it's not needed to be used, right? It's just a deposit. Mm -hmm. All right. Is that uh, amenable? Okay. All right. Well, that was my last question. In view of the foregoing, the planning board voted on July, it will be July 23rd, um, to find that the application conforms to the site plan standards contained in 210.136-.1 as indicated below and to approve the site plan subject to the conditions contained herein. Um, I added a statement some to the effect that the planning board appreciates the applicants and you have the, uh, some sort of statement, yeah. commitment to exploring and installing solar panel, panels and or a, an electric vehicle charging station, if possible, on this site. Is that okay to just add in there? Okay. Um, the site disturbance in the wetland buffer zones and slopes in excess of 25% shall be minimized. Unique natural and historic features shall be preserved whenever possible. Uh, tree vegetation and soil removal shall be minimized. The site activity shown on the site plan shall be screened from view from abutting properties and residential use. Methods of screening may include solid fencing, landscaping, or the proposals of the applicant subject to review of the planning board. Such screening may be located on or off-site. If located off-site, written permission of the off-site property owner shall be pro provided to the board. Um, it should be noted that additional landscaping was added to the north and east sides of the site along Lumber Street to enhance density and screening as recommended by the Design Review Board. All utilities shall be underground. The exposed storage areas, machinery, service tanks, truck loading areas, utility buildings, and structures and other similar uses shall be visually screened from abutting properties and those using public ways. Screening methods may consist of solid fencing, landscaping, or similar proposals submitted by the applicant subject to review of the planning board. The site plan shall show measures to reduce and abate noise and odors generated from the site that will impact surrounding properties. Um, and there are additional conditions here. The applicant shall be responsible for mitigating all construction-related impacts. Um, the I'm not going to read the whole thing. The applicant shall regularly remove construction, trash, and debris from the site in accordance with good construction practices. All construction activities shall adhere to the applicable local, state, federal laws, etc. The site plan shall comply with all zoning requirements. The site plan complies with the standard. The zoning board of C, the zoning board of appeals decision dated, and the date will have to be put in there. I don't know what it is. Yeah. 
the applicant shall comply with the following conditions. Lots 84, 86, 88, and 92 West Main Street must be combined prior to the issuance of the building permit. Site plan standard I, the site plan shall maximize the convenience and safety of vehicular and pedestrian movement within the site and to and from adjacent public ways if supporting documentation such as traffic or parking studies submitted to the planning board indicates the vehicular and pedestrian traffic movement depicted on the site plan and proposed in the application will have a significant negative impact or impacts on the site or within the adjacent ways such impacts shall be mitigated by the applicant. Um, and you shall comply with um, an additional uh, piece of this was the sign reading right turn only between this is a change 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. and visible to those exiting the site onto West Main Street that shall be installed at the westernmost exit of the site. The parking areas shall be designed so that they are safe and convenient and do not detract from the use and enjoyment of proposed structures. Parking areas shall be designed to facilitate safe pedestrian access to the structures and other on-site facilities. Site plan standard K, the site plan shall minimize the number of curb cuts on public ways. Um, the project proposes two vehicle access drives on West Main Street and two vehicle access drives on Elm Street. Uh, site plan standard L, the driveway shall be designed to ensure safe site distances at interior and exterior intersections and along driveways in accordance with the applicable AASHTO requirements. The site plan, um, it complies, okay. Sidewalks shall be provided along the entire frontage of the subject property along existing roads. We understand that we are making um, an exception to that that we just discussed in this meeting. Um, the, so I'm reading the staff note, the site has frontage. Um, the existing sidewalk shall be extended along Elm Street from Lumber Street to the first site entrance on Elm Street or to the second site entrance. The first, first one, first so first. not the most westerly first one. That, that's what we talked. So that I I misspoke. So Dave, I just want to make sure we circle back. The, the sidewalk, one. yeah, the sidewalk coming the off of uh, Lumber Street Extension is going to go just to the first entrance way, not. I thought they had a sidewalk along the back. But it's mm -hmm. it's it's on site. It goes along the building. Oh, oh, along yeah. the building, it's right? Right, along because the there's wetlands. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that we weren't clear. Um, the levels of illumination shall be provided as follows. Um, no property may have exterior lighting. It, 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 it details out the um, proposals. So for pole mounted lights in the parking and driveway areas, the height of the light source shall not exceed 15 feet, which shall be measured from the ground at the base of the pole to the bottom of the fixture. Pedestrian area lighting shall utilize fully shielded fixtures and the height of the light source shall not exceed 12 feet measured from the ground at the base of the pole to the bottom of the fixture. No exterior lighting may interfere with the safe movement of motor vehicles on public ways or private ways open to the public. Mercury vapor lamps shall be pro are prohibited. Up lighting shall be permitted only when used in the following manner. Um, to light a primary entrance when the fixture or lamp is wall mounted. Um, to light local, state, or national flags, or to highlight and illuminate a building, facade, or landscaping, but that is not included here, right? Uh, up lighting. Yes, we don't have up lighting mm -hmm. anywhere, do we? The the sign at the very front, the mobiles and the gas. What what sign? Gas sign. Yeah, it's a gas price sign. That's what I thought. Okay. It's like a ramp or something. Yes. Yeah. Um, Flood lighting shall, is not permit, it shall not be permitted except under certain circumstances. And uh, safety and security lighting shall use motion sensors, photo cells, or photo cells. There won't be any motion sensitive lighting on this site because it's 24 7. Hmm. Um, <laughs> um, blinking, flashing, moving, revolving, or flickering lights, as well as lighting that changes intensity of color or color shall be prohibited except for lighting for public safety or traffic control and lighting required by U.S. Federal Aviation Administration standards. Um, and notwithstanding any provisions of this subsection to the contrary, sidewalks that run along the perimeter of a site and are in a public right of way or on an abutting property may be illuminated and illumination may spill onto abutting non-residential properties if requested in writing by that abutting property owner. That doesn't apply here. Um, site plan standard O, adequate access shall be provided to each structure for emergency vehicles and personnel. 
Site plan standard P, the site plan shall conform to applicable mass DEP stormwater management regulations. Um, a final sign, this is a, a stormwater pollution prevention plan must be provided to the board prior to construction. Um, mechanical equipment or other utility hardware on the roof, grounds, or building shall be screened. The site plan complies, but the, ac the applicant will um, comply with the following condition. Typical cut sheets of proposed mechanical equipment shall be provided to the board prior to construction to verify compliance with noise, noise requirements. Site plan standard R, all the dumpsters shall be uh, screened from public view. Um, and um, the standard uh, the standard conditions, the director of municipal inspections inspect site plans under construction for compliance, et cetera. Construction may occur only during allowable construction hours as detailed. Um, uh, in accordance with the zoning bylaw, the applicant shall provide a performance guarantee of the amount of $10,000 to the town prior to the commencement of construction pursuant to this decision. And then um, the uh, emergency procedure plan condition, the, uh, the fact that the sign in the island won't impede turning movements, and the road safety audit language, which we will um, trust Georgia got because I was not writing. I wrote down the time so I could rewatch. <laughs> oh, perfect. Okay. Um, all right. And then the other two conditions that I had added were part of other decisions, so they're not part of this necessarily part of this decision. The only comment I had one one of mine talked about the lighting, saying everything turned off at midnight, which of course. That's for recreation facilities. Right. I'm sorry. Yeah. We, These are the, the stand, all the standard conditions are included here um, that don't necessarily apply. Like you know, the pro prohibit prohibition of flood lighting is mm -hmm. is written here, but it doesn't apply. I mean, it applies, but you're not proposing yeah, I mean, any flood lighting. Yeah. 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 Yep. Um, and I think that's just yeah recreation, recreation facilities. facilities. Yeah. So, unless we, there is. Do we have a copy or no? I have, I gave yeah. one. Okay. I have one more question. Sure. I sort of picked it up on the plan and I just wanted a clarification. Um, on the Elm Street side, um, I noticed that there's a sidewalk that comes off the back. It's on, I'm just saying, on the left west. side, the west side. Um, and then there's no grass shown um, along that whole berm where. Can I just show you where I hatched it? On the street. Yeah, on the street. There's yeah, there's a big drainage issue there. So there, there is grass that's going to go up to the edge of the pavement. Okay. That we'll go to. We just show new grass up to our property line, but obviously we won't leave a strip uh, between the edge of the pavement and the property line. We'll, we'll, we'll go up to the edge of the pavement. Okay, yeah, so, so can I just have you look at this and make sure that this is what you're talking about, um, where I drew it? Because it's just a little unclear on the plan. Would you mind? Is that okay? Sure. It's just like my one, one, one more little point there. So is that where you're talking about, right in there? No, I'm sorry. I was talking between here. Oh, it was just because the road ends there and there's nothing there. Is that just a misnomer? Is that just? Do you so wanna... I'll just speak to it back here. Okay. Thank So there's an existing drainage structure that's not on the edge of the pavement. It's actually inset off the pavement a couple feet. That's like a U-shaped on Elm Street rock system. On, yeah, there's two of them that are that way on Elm Street. One of them we are accommodating with our new entrance. It'll actually be within the paved area, so we can easily take care of that. But then there's another one that's basically behind the store that we will have to make sure that the drainage is continuing to go to that, so we'll have to improve the landscaping up to and around the edge of it, but we're certainly not going to block it or do anything. Um, and then going on the other side, there is um, a strip that's off of our property that we didn't have any work going on down there. So, I mean, we'll probably, we don't show it formally, but I imagine these guys don't want, again, a strip along the front edge of their property that's not going to look good that marries up to their nice landscaping. It's just a showing improvements within the town. Is it property. town property? It's it town is. property. Okay. Yeah. So just the technically right showing away. all the work. The town right of way. So will that be grass? It'll also be grass. It'll just be covered. I mean, if you could put grass up to the edge yeah. of pave. Yeah, I'm not going to leave it. If you go out there now, there's 
there's mulch and grass there now, so that's all coming out. They'll have to replace it with something. Okay. Yeah. And then through the through the chair, mm -hmm. historically, you mentioned that you wouldn't want really people to walk along that edge because of the drainage concerns, and, and maybe you would encourage them to walk if they're walking on that side to kind of walk onto the property around it. There is an ability to do that, yes, if they needed to. Okay, so that's what that piece of pavement, that little hook of pavement on the west side is. What's around the building, like the sidewalk? That's sidewalk, actually. We're so, proposing to put sidewalk just so, to that point. Oh, okay, so then the all will be grassed in there, yes. and that will be grassed. Okay, thank you very much. So as a reminder, Dave, Amy, Fran, Muriel, and Frank are the only voters on this. Um, I will happily entertain a motion um, to approve the, the minor project site plan with the um, agreed upon conditions. So moved. Second. All the, uh, is there any further discussion? Just real quick discussion. Yes. According to my quick analysis, which may not be accurate, I think we're only providing one variance for the sidewalks. I think everything else. Pretty much I think that there, there's only is there only one waiver is the sidewalk. Or it wouldn't be a waiver. It'd oh, be it's also the board. It's, it's setbacks too because the site is um, surrounded by fronted. Is that showing here? It's yeah, in the plan. It, 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 okay, but it, it was part of the plan. application. Okay. Okay. So yeah, but that is definitely couple, included. Okay. Is there is there any other sort of waivers? But we should just detail out. No, the I don't know. So. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Uh, oh. Yeah. I, I'm still extremely uncomfortable expanding the hours of this location to 24 hours. Um, and I was I'm hoping that we could find a better solution. Um, but uh, it's my personal preference, and I'll just leave it at that. It's my personal preference too. As a member of the planning board, though, um, I will assert publicly and strongly that my personal preference does not carry the day. Um, we have, you know, we work as a board and we work um, for the benefit of the town, and we need to make sure that our decisions are defensible. And um, I believe that this decision is certainly defensible. So. Um Maybe it would be a good idea, obviously not affected this, but to put something on our agenda going forward where I we agree. can discuss I agree. this in a general, more general approach, not specific to this project. I think Miro brought it up, so through the chair, she brought it up with Zach. I think it would be a great idea for yeah. Zach, and then yeah. Zach could kind of float it up to this body. I think it's a bigger so, conversation. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. I think the town hasn't thought of it, and I think that yep. um, I think a lot of people will have a lot of opinions on it, sure. to be honest. I don't disagree. All right. Thank you. Yep. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. Thank, Thank you all. Thank you. Um, we are way late on our 8.30. Is that applicant? I don't know if they're here. That applicant did come Yay. in. <laughs> but you were not timely, so we, we got to pass on that. <laughs> oh, yeah. were you in the hallway? I apologize. Oh, you're here and went home. <laughs> I apologize. Thank you. Good luck. Take care. Thank you. Good evening. Right over here in front of the microphone. Um, so that this is the uh, minor project after the fact, 52 South Street, NMC Corporation. Miro, did we close the hearing? I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing Salute. for Second. <laughs> all those in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. Thank you very much for the reminder. It's Kobe. It's Kobe. It's always mm -hmm. getting secret it's Kobe, but I'll take the credit. <laughs> I, I do need to run. I'm sorry. So uh, no, I appreciate that you made it. I really do. Thank that you. was uh, that was critical. So a shower right now here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Welcome to board members. It's good to see you. Thank you. Nice to see you, Frank. Okay. 
if you can introduce the project and tell us what you need from us. We haven't seen the materials yet. Sure. Uh, my name is Dan Feeney. I'm a professional engineer at Bales and Thomas, representing uh, Dell EMC. Paul Fitzgerald with uh, facilities at Dell. Um, so back last year, um, there was a failure of the retaining wall out at 52 South Street. Um, so on the northern side of the property. Do I have to vote to reopen this? No, I voted to continue yeah, until after. Continue. Thank you. Um, sorry. Nope, Go. that's probably. <laughs> Uh, so back, it was probably um, late summer last year when it was noticed that some of the blocks, it's a versatile lock retaining wall, so a modular block wall, some of the blocks had come off, some of the material behind the wall had started to slough off. Um, so a geotech and structural engineer were engaged to review and assess the situation. They came up with a proposed design solution, which was to remove a portion of the retaining wall, the portion that was failing and a little bit beyond that, um, and replace it with a two to one slope. Um, so by replacing the retaining wall, which at its highest point was approximately 25 feet high with a um, two to one slope, it would result in a loss of approximately 11 parking spaces. So the site had 519 parking spaces. After the construction, it had 508 parking spaces. Um, zoning requires a minimum of 465, so it still um, met the zoning requirements. So the site work basically consisted of the construction of the two to one slope, um, some minor drainage realignment to, to coincide with the new slope, um, and the removal of that section of pavement. There was the relocation of a guardrail um, back up to the top of the two to one slope. Um, and the relocation of a light pole. So the work was performed in the emergency order issued by the uh, building inspector. Um, we did get the approval we needed um, from the Conservation Commission. They determined that it was a minor project subject to um, um, an immediate action item, so we didn't require an order of conditions from them. So both the building inspector and um, the Conservation Commission agent were involved during the construction. It was completed um, between um, the end of October and the end of November um, of last year. Um, so the vegetation back down at the bottom of the slope has taken back in now. Um, the erosion control um, barrier has been removed, and so the project is complete. Um, as a requirement of the emergency action, we were required to file for minor site plan review as there was a modification of greater than five parking spaces. Okay, thank you. Do you have anything from your perspective? Um, no, it was really the only substantial substantial changes. Uh, the things that did change on site was uh, one light in the guardrail and the fence, but all of those were built to exactly how they were before. Um, and they did come before design review board, but the board did not have any recommendations as you could tell. Um, and I did review the previous decision, and there are no um, conflicting conditions that would affect if there were to be an approval tonight. Um, okay. That Thank would you. affect those. Uh, do the board members have any questions? Is it as straightforward as it seems? It is as straightforward mm -hmm. as it seems. It's <laughs> <laughs> it's, Maybe I'm missing it's, something. No, it is. That was good. It, was, it had a lot of cooperation. We wanted to get it done before the winter snows through last year, and we did. So there's a lot of good cooperation from the town and Concon. So um, I will entertain a motion to approve the minor site plan revision. Wait, members of the public? I don't think. Oh, is there any members of the public here to speak to this? Thank you. I don't think so either, but good call. Um, anybody want to toss up that motion? So moved. Uh, is there a second? Second. second. And for Kobe's benefit, did you get who was the second? Um, is there further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you very much. And thank you for thank your you. patience. No, I know no you problem. waited. We appreciate that. Thank you, board. All right, so I'm assuming we have, oh, oh, I'll entertain a Maybe motion. Maybe you should get a little something here. I know, you're going to have a little, a little, little red flag. Huh? Is, so is, moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you for the reminder. I appreciate that. 
Um, okay, so now we are almost exactly on time for our discussion um, on the Zoning Advisory Committee structure. And I think we have people who came to help us with this conversation. Does everybody want to, that's here for this, just want to move up to the table so it's easier to speak and be heard? And we also received two comments, but I'll invite you to introduce yourself and uh, your experience and why you're here. And then um, I'll also introduce, just for people to have in their head, the, the two emails that we got from other uh, Zach members as we start the conversation. Do I need the mic? I think you can be heard. They'll come out okay. and tell us. If uh, I'm Ted Barker, Hub 75 Grove Street. I've been three or four years on Zach, uh, and I just finished my first year on Concom. Perfect, thank you. John a familiar Flory, face. Six Barber Road, uh, planning board, and Zach. And I want you to know you're interfering with my Monday night bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> I have things of change. We appreciate that you came. <laughs> Truly, we appreciate that you came. Yes. Uh, John Cotillo, one David Joseph Road. I've been chair of, I've been on Zach for about 10 years and chair for several of them. Thank you all for coming. Um, if everybody's amenable, I will at least read the emails that we got from the people who were not able to come. Uh, the first email is from Rhea McNamara. Hi, George. I wanted to let you know that I won't be able to attend tonight's meeting. Um, I do have an opinion on the group. I'm trying not to read everything that isn't necessary. I have been a member on and off for a few years, and what happened last year was there were too many people who showed up to be members because they had specific issue in mind, but then really did not have that much interest in the rest of the subjects we reviewed. Um, also, it appeared as though Zach would take anyone who wanted to volunteer, and this posed an issue because many had no volunteer experience with the town boards or committees and really just wanted a sounding board for their opinions instead of listening to the position of the more experienced members and the protocols while serving. For my first two years, I didn't really speak up, but listened to the members with more experience. Now I use my voice and know how the others vet issues. It is important to learn this process before just becoming to Zach for one or two subjects. Um, and would create an associate level or volunteer level uh, before a voting level in this volunteer work. So we had talked about potentially a non-voting members. Um, this is from uh, Matt Kisner. I'm interested in another year, but because he's looking around at other town offices, um, if, so we had talked a little bit about changing um, uh, appointment slots. So if we change to a three-year slot, he's not necessarily interested in a three-year slot, um, looking for um, a one-year slot. Just throwing that out there. Um, the ZAC should be given a clear mandate of things to consider and discuss by the planning board, almost like a warrant of purpose. ZAC exists and is empowered at the discretion of the planning board. There is no reason they shouldn't be playing a more firm role in setting expectations on outputs and topics to be discussed. This would also help answer a critical question for ZAC. What does uh, time quote? What does time well spent on Zach look like? Um, uh, let's see. That's uh, ultimately an issue that will probably be shaped at the discretion of whoever is chairing it, um, and that there is uh, certainly an opportunity for the planning board liaison to play an active role. Similarly, I would set up some quote unquote no fly zones. We don't care what you rec recommend if we aren't discussing it. Um, I would make these topics, which have recently been voted on or shot down at either Zach, town meeting, or planning board, um, off limits. Uh, so his point is to not just keep cycling um, uh, subjects back on onto the board. Um, I would be I would cap Zach at 10 to 12. Um, uh, 20 killed us due to our inability to always have a quorum and uh, get things done. Um, nice to have everyone involved and to capitalize on energy and enthusiasm, but not at the expense of progress. Um, he also suggests um, consider requiring a bi-meeting report out to the planning board during the ZAC term so there's a connection feedback loop. Um, and then he speaks to a, an idea that may or may not be con considered by ZAC, um, and that is looking uh, having a professional consultant review um, potentially of uh, the zoning uh, by lot in general to, um, for lack of a better term, to streamline it and make it uh, more efficient and, and bring it up to date. Um, but that's a big conversation that the ZAC, once we form it, might or might not undertake. 
So that's the input we got from people who aren't here. Claire, did you have um, input as well? Because you're welcome to come forward and sit with us. You know, I have not served on that. I'm more interested in hearing the discussion. Okay. Um, it sounds like you, you've been touching on some of the concerns that I've had about okay. size becoming cumbersome yeah. and, and inefficient. Yeah. Yep. and maybe bringing in a little more commitment and quiet mode for your term. So yep. uh, I'll, I'll chime in if I want, but I'm interested to hear uh, particularly those who have been serving. I wanted to make sure you felt welcome. Thank you for that, though. <laughs> um, um, so, uh, so just to open the discussion, I was thinking about it a little bit, and this is to open the discussion that nothing is set in stone, but um, I sort of thought in terms of um, a seven-member board, with uh, the ZBA necessarily being one of those spots, um, a member from the ZBA necessarily being one of those spots, um, and then um, for the first year having uh, two three-year spots, two two-year two spots, two one-year spots, and that um, when people were thereafter appointed, they would be appointed for a three-year spot except for the ZBA spot. So that would be two, 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 and then the one would be the ZBA spot, which would typically be a one-year spot. I just throw that out as a conversation starter. I think that there is universal agreement that we had too many people. Um, and one of the things that we talked about uh, pretty extensively is um, trying to improve the Zach's ability to be uh, functional in preparation for town meeting and necessarily being appointed at the end of August and needing to be um, ready with materials um, in December was probably not an optimal time frame, um, but that's that's a subject that we want to you know talk about, um, and then um, also because we've always been open to all comers and that turned out to be a problem this past year, um, we think we necessarily need to talk about um, what we will use as parameters for appointing future members. So some discussion about, about that is, uh, is uh, up for grabs. And then sort of anything, but I wanted to just sort of give a starting point and then see what uh, people feel. And, and uh, I'd be, is the board amenable to hearing from the, our, our guests first and then, okay. <coughs> yes, John. With the chair. Um, I pulled out my notes of things I wanted to accomplish last year that we never got to. So oh boy, this is, no pressure. This is, is, is kind of based on that when I went through, is looking at it, and I think the idea of a seven person, I think that setup is, I was thinking seven to nine, but I thought that stepping back and saying structure first, what, how do you want them to proceed? So I thought one of the first things is maybe look at the the zoning laws as, a, as a, the, the bylaws as a whole, and the planning board prioritize what should be looked at. And that becomes the guidance and the approach. Uh, obviously, if there's something's a hot issue, you can bring it up. The second, I think that, you know, I was on SAC for one year, and, and uh, many people have been on. Um, maybe addressing prioritizing, here's what we're going to do first, address two or three at a time, report back to the board and do it that way so there's not seven or eight going on at different, at different stages. Um, and the constant kind of report back to the board to make sure, okay, now we spent a month on these two, we've got them, Zach has it where they think it should be, comes back to the board. And if it's wrapped up, it's wrapped up, and those go on the side. Uh, but I think also the exactly the I was thinking of the three-year, two-year, one-year, and have it running all year round, or as maybe not meeting twice a month, but you know, depending on the the number of items. Um, and I think we've all learned that probably six. Seven at the most, five is what we can get through town meeting. Then when we get over that amount, it tends to not pass a town meeting. And it's hard if you've got eight or nine or ten items to be able to explain it, prepare for it, uh, and convince people to support it. I think it's better to do a good job on a smaller number for town meeting 
and uh, have the arguments down and have everybody aware of it than have a larger number and realize that a third of them aren't going to pass. That's my comment. Thank you. I appreciate that. That actually um, is, uh, hits me as I hadn't even thought about sort of uh, setting a goal for each town meeting and that makes a lot of sense just that there's only so much capacity people have unless there's some reason we have to yes maybe I have a couple of thoughts I had looked back to see how many people were on Zach the last few years since 2014 and the smallest number we ever had was nine so I think uh, the idea of staggered terms is good but I think so I'm gonna come to the book okay. I was gonna get all of them and I definitely okay. want your ideas totally um, John or yeah, I, I think what we have to really look at first is <clears throat> what I tried to explain to people, what Zach is, to which I talk about how many members and, and all of that. And, 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 and that's one of the things that, that happened this, this past year with so many new members. People came on there thinking, I'm going to go on there and I'm going to change, change these rules so this doesn't happen in my neighborhood and this doesn't happen near my house. And, and people came on there thinking that Zach was there to... Um, help further it's one of their causes or something and, um, and and the way Zach was originally designed was a the it was supposed to be the the thinking the, the think tank for the planning board things that the planning board couldn't get to um, you know when when there were a lot of site plan, site plan reviews coming up and everything else that there were some things like even talking about the uh, um, the uh, up updating the, the town um, Astro charter the, the, no, the, the, the zoning bylaws the, the, the bylaws and then and you know and even getting into some some of the other stuff but um, you know and then to look at some bylaw changes but what it morphed into was um, if, I, if I may say a, a, uh, a platform for for townspeople to come in and complain about something and then okay maybe Zach should take this one on and, and without any filter of the planning board saying, you know, maybe not. But that was what was good when we used to have one or two or even three members of the planning board on at one time. We, we used to have, there, there used to be a few members of the planning board. Um, and, 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 you know, getting to the uh, taking on all comers. It really wasn't taking on all comers. It was, it was because it was tough to get people to come on. And, um, and it was up to the planning board to really decide, um, you know, how many. And, and there were many years, though, that we only had uh, seven, I think, going back. You know, you go back to 14, but even before that, I think in your first years, we only had, like, uh, I don't think we had nine. I think the first year, we might have had 13 or 14. Oh, my God, that was a tough year. And um, what yeah, made it tough, quit. though, was not the numbers, was a number or two. Yeah. Um, and when that member or two resigned, things flowed really smoothly. Yes, and a 13 member board was fine. I would advocate for an odd number no matter what. Oh, no, you have to have yeah. an odd number yeah. for, for voting. But, but that's what happened last year, so, you know, having, having 20 and one member never even showed up or even wanted to uh, send in a note to say that they would never <coughs> come. And that would have helped our, help our quorum. But, uh, but no, actually the most important thing is to really get the charter down. Can I jump in on yeah. that point? That one of the recommendations, uh, so we've been sort of talking about it informally for a couple of meetings. One of the recommendations is to, was to build in necessarily some mechanism for addressing a member that doesn't come. Do you think that that would be valuable? Well, the, the, the tough thing about Zach, and you hit on it, is that, um, you know, uh, people sign up in August to September, first meetings at the end of September, and we're wrapped up by January. So the most meetings we can really get in, because figure, figure this, this Thanksgiving, and then the, then the Christmas holidays, and New Year, and Valentine's Day. Um, I think that comes in February, but... Yeah, not February. <laughs> no, but, 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 no, but we've, we've had meetings... We're planning for that really much. No, we've had, no, we've had meetings <laughs> in February. That's right, there you go. In the um, but no, but, but um, you know, we only end up only having eight or ten meetings. So, so it really is a tough thing to, for somebody to try and cut their teeth on and, and, and really um, uh, participate. Because if there are only eight or ten meetings, by the third or fourth meeting, you say, okay, so this is what this act does. And then you miss one or two of them, and you're down to only you know uh, five or six meetings that and people snow. attend. And snow, snow happens. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's, we we did all right last year though. 
um, in the last couple of years. No, but the most important thing, even more than the people, is to really get down what Zach does and what Zach can get accomplished. Uh, John, John hit on hit on a couple points that uh, to to really prioritize stuff, and that was one of the tough things as chair was trying to you know, work with Elaine um, to. Uh, split out what we actually could talk about because one of the other th dangerous parts is that Zach um, sometimes was getting into general bylaws mm -hmm. and those have to go through the Board of Selectmen mm -hmm. and um, you know when people start talking about uh, hours of operations or uh, you know uh, or some of these other or, or the um, nuisance bylaw mm -hmm. because people wanted it to be a general bylaw with with uh, no grandfathering so, um, so that's one of the other things that that's why the, the planning board needs to be more more involved to make sure that that we're sticking to things that really are um, zone related mm -hmm. and um, don't go off into so obscure stuff. Mm -hmm. But you were, you were at many meetings last year at the at the beginning. And, and I so was, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and I I appreciate it, and I appreciate the challenge too, and we knew it when it, it happened. Um, and you uh, joked about it with me when I said, oh, I 20's about, hard, 20's hard, and you were just saying, thank you, you're welcome. I said, you're welcome. Yes, but the 20 was hard, and, and it really wasn't fair to both the town just and Just so you know, that is my people. universal response to people that complain. I'm just no, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, but, yeah. that's just how I roll, John. And it was, but know, I, it, I, it, I did it appreciate well. that it was a challenge. I really did. I mean, it wasn't, it, and we we faced, just for, you know, re-edification of the public who may still be watching at this late hour, um, we had not established guidelines for appointing people, which is one of the things that we absolutely want to do this year so that we we did not tell people that there would be interviews because it hadn't necessarily, it hadn't happened that way before. Um, and we hadn't talked about how, how we would structure it and how we would necessarily interview people. Um, and so, you know, it's unfortunate that it happened that way. And I think that we all, everyone agrees that it was um, too many people. Um, although it's, it's, you know, it's... It did work out well. It's wonderful to, yeah. to make it possible for people to participate. But um, mm -hmm. to have 20 voting members is really, um, is really cumbersome. Yeah, and, and you know, it, um, you know, towards, uh, towards the end, you know, it, I gotta say that, that everybody participated. Right. In, in it, um, it was it, it was it was tough giving everybody enough time to well because you, you, you guys follow. It was tough to make sure everybody had enough time to talk, mm -hmm. you know, and give their opinion because there mm -hmm. were there was you know 17, 18 opinions sometimes, you know, and then other times we only had nine. We couldn't couldn't have a meeting, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but uh, but you know it, it's great that we're looking at at somewhere between seven to nine seven to nine members because you know it is it's. You know, it, as, as much as, as, as it was said that uh, we didn't know what was too many, as everybody's, uh, well, many of you are, have been on boards, and even nine years, you know, can be cumbersome. Nine can, nine can be a big board. Nine it absolutely can be a big can board. Be a big as board. as exactly. chair, you, you, you can, you can yep. see that, yep. that you're know, trying, to, trying to herd nine people into trying to come to a cohesive agreement mm -hmm. and, um, and be, be able to stand behind it can be tough. Mm -hmm. But, uh, well, but it was I really worked out well. And I, and I want to thank everybody that was on Zach last year and, and, and for the past uh, 10 years. I've really enjoyed it and I've been, been I've served with many of these people and it's great. Thank you. Thank you, John. Ted, I just wanted to get to you. Um, I'm going to offer a slightly different take and yeah. pull on the reins and say one year, it was rough last year, uh -huh. but I don't think that we should do too much based on one year's mistake. Uh -huh. um, I also very much want to hold on to the being a committee that newbies can join that's how i got involved in town politics i think several at the table got involved that way mm -hmm. um and if we limit it to the number that seems popular nine but we also have mandatory planning board rep mandatory uh, i'm not sure if you're there john because you're like zach or because you're a selectman but if we have zba on there if yeah, we have yeah. concom on there suddenly more than half of the board is coming from other committees which means I don't, I mean, I didn't do the math in my head now, but if we only have three, four open positions for a committee that's been a wonderful gateway to get people involved, I would caution that we go too far and we act too strongly to one year that admittedly was problematic, but I, it was one year in my experience and I'd be interested in the numbers that Amy had. Uh, I'd be interested if she knows if I've done three or four years, uh, but the other years worked, and when it didn't work, it wasn't because of numbers. It was because of personality, and I don't know if there's any way to judge that. I think it just happens sometimes. Um, 
I'd also respectfully disagree with John and say, I don't think that we've been hurt by people with one issue. Um, I haven't seen that for three years. Like, there was a loud personality a couple years ago. But she was loud on all the issues. <laughs> um, I haven't seen that. I think that people have been thoughtful about every issue that comes up. Um, so I just don't want to go too far. I, I uh -huh. think that it's a really good gateway committee, and I want to hold on to that. Um, but some tweaks can certainly be in there. And I do think 20 was the uh, When I left from home, the number I had in my head was 11, 13 as a cap. But there have been a number of years when it's been less than that, fewer than that. So OK, if there's a cap, but not a required fill that number. Those are my thoughts. Thank you very much. I yeah. totally yeah. appreciate that you Everybody came, by the way. I know it's late and it's another meeting, and so it was really valuable for us. I appreciate that. Yeah, John. Yeah, if I may, through the chair. One of the things we do have to be careful of is that, um, and not to disagree with you, that it's a good place for newbies to come in. And it is an easy committee in the fact that maximum 10 meetings, and they get done for the year. However, um, I do think it's important to have, have a, a voice from the, from the chamber also because they come up with things that are very important because when we start talking about site plan reviews and all of those kind of things, having a member of the chamber is really important because many of the things that we do do affect businesses in town. And you know, do we want, to, you know, and, and, and the, the whole basis of zoning is to encourage or discourage things. And we want to make sure that, um, that we're uh, listening to the business community because we don't want to lose any of them. Um, but uh, but to, but to say that, that you know there are many committees that people can join to to to, to learn about the town, and um, and I don't want you know something that's so important as a zoning change to fall in the, fall into the hands of, of constant newbies. So we do have to have a bait have a, have a have a foundation of people that understand what's going on in the town, what's happening. And then bring bring a few uh, a, a few at large members, but we have to be careful of having this be the be the the place that for people to cut their teeth on town politics. Okay, thank you very much. Did anybody from the public want to weigh in before we go to the board? Okay, so do you want to just go around the board? I'll start with you. Sure. All right. Um, thank you very much. So, and again, appreciate everyone being here. Just a couple of comments from my perspective. Um, one um, for new members. You know, some of the things we've talked about is the possibility of having uh, alternate members, which I think is an appropriate way to allow people to engage. But I'd also say that you don't have to be on a board to be involved, and and especially these smaller boards. I mean, every time I've ever been to a meeting, I mean, there's an encouragement to come up and talk and engage. So sometimes I get a little nervous when I when we start hearing like you know that we have a mandatory member from the from the Chamber of Commerce, we have a mandatory member from this group and this group because I, I think at the end of the day. It's up to all of us to be to be good stewards and, and, and to engage when we need to. And in case in point, we have people from a number of different boards here that, that are that are you know that are taking their time to engage in, in the uh, in the subject. Um, so, but but for me, I, I think to me for the for the 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 ZAC to operate properly, um, I think there's a big benefit to having longer terms. I think there's a big benefit for having it year round. That may decrease the desirability for the newbies to be involved, but I think there's also ways that, you know, through alternate spots that we can still accommodate and let people engage in a way. It's just probably going to be for a longer term commitment. So maybe even those alternate spots, or maybe maybe that's a one year, and maybe that turns into something more, but maybe there's some ways to, to give people a taste without, without asking for a full commitment. Thank you. Carol is a member who has served on Zach. <coughs> Having served on Zach. <laughs> um, I actually tend to agree a little bit with Ted. I think the number needs to be manageable, but I think um, coming in to Zach as somebody that doesn't necessarily know all the rules, if you go on to, if you come into planning board, you need to know the zoning rules and you need to know this rule and that rule. And Zach really gives you an opportunity to, to think about how things could be better in town and and how to make things work and and your your views are not necessarily going down a pipeline of learned knowledge you're a little bit more open to to opportunities and what you can think of and honestly to to put somebody from every you know from zoning 
or ZBA and Planning Board and the Chamber of Commerce, I think you do take the people out of the equation and I think the just the people input is very important to the process for what the process was designed for. The way, in my opinion, that, that Zach is efficient is through the chair and if the chair directs the conversation or gets the conversation back to the topic on hand, it can be very productive and was very productive in, in the years that I served when people brought the conversation back to where it needed to be and, and kept you from straying off this way or that way. But I think public input and not necessarily just board members sitting on a board um, is very important for the purpose of ZAC. Um, did you uh, weigh in on year-round and longer terms? I think year-round would be a great thing. Um, I, I don't necessarily, if you want to do terms, you could do terms. I wouldn't do more than two years in a term. Okay, thank you. Here. Well, I was nodding my head a lot with all of the different comments. <laughs> so, um, I was one of the newbies on Zach last year. And look at um, you now. And look at me now. Grains. <laughs> and, and I agree it was unwieldy, but John kept us pretty well organized. <laughs> and so, um, it, uh, it, was, it was good, it was energetic, and it was, there were a lot of good discussions, and I think that that needs to be maintained as much as can be. I mean, there's always going to be the limitation of, yeah, nobody shows up to volunteer, you know, so, um, um, but of course, you know, that's where we'll get on the phone and try to call people and make them volunteer. Uh, <laughs> so I, um, I'm in favor of having voting members and associate members. Um, I think the voting members has to include some people who aren't on a board otherwise or haven't been on you know a committee or a board for years and years and years um, in the past and just happened to come back on it if we can get you know new people every year somebody who doesn't have a lot of experience um, on the town the town boards and committees that I think that adds a lot but I also believe the associate members or alternate members or whatever we call them make sure that they have less commitment so you know they they're coming you know we're naming them as a member but they're not voting the first year that they're on so we could say um, up to four additional members who are you know associate members non-voting members um, so I think that that's important I don't think that um, you know we should write in a lot of rules around you have to be an associate member for a year before you can become a voting member. You know, I think we need to have flexibility. You know, so just it needs to not be too, too um, bad. Now, I had recently, you know, when we were talking about it a few weeks ago, I had said, well, yeah, you know, as far as criteria, people should be a resident. And it was actually after, you know, I was like, no, resident or a business person who operates in town. So I think that um, that that really should be allowable, whether it's a chamber of commerce person or they're not part of the chamber of commerce. I'm not sure all business people are, <laughs> um, but uh, but that yes, people who are business owners in town or business managers in town, I think. Um, having that kind of representation makes a lot of sense, um, but obviously the vast majority will be residents. Um, and and I do think that you know having the board members and having the history was incredibly important um, for the newer people. But one thing that I mentioned in a previous meeting as well is training. I think the first meeting of a new year or a new appointed, newly appointed Zach needs to be a session, you know, and it's a mandatory session, so it's not like, oh, just, you know, mm -hmm. if, you, if you want the training, you can have the training. No, it's everybody comes to the first meeting and we understand what is Zach about. Yep. And we don't just delve into the agenda. That's, that's what I felt like was really missing for me as a new member 
was okay you know I, I I was my head was spinning the first few meetings I was like okay I kind of you know I can give comments on things but I really have no idea what we're doing here you know and that only became clear after two or three meetings and that was you know we were already thick into it so I think it would that would help a lot is everybody who shows up at the first Thank meeting you. goes through that training and hopefully we can you know tap into eHop for for their their great information, um, and perhaps the liaisons from planning board and and selectmen and um, ZBA can be the people giving the training, or, or the, you know, there's lots of different options. There's lots of knowledgeable people, um, and I, I love John Ferrari's um, uh, comments about um, about really structure first. You know, this is. This is, you know, just look at the, look at, you know, have, have a very specific set of um, tasks for the zoning board to look at each year, but also guidelines, you know, so um, all, the, all those ideas were so great in terms of don't try to do too much at town meeting. Mm -hmm. um, if we have the continuation of the year round board, with um, with uh, people on it for at least the voting members on it for um, for two to three years, um, then they can continue after certain things have been put forward to town meeting the town meeting pathway. You know, in January, then they can start working on next year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, so so that's that's the way. Yeah, that would be really great. I think that would be wonderful. Um, so training year round. Yeah, I think. I think that's it. <laughs> I think that's awesome. Thank the you. Chair. Yes. If I just want to, because I will forget to follow up on one. One of the things about training is maybe have a preliminary training session before people are selected for the board, because I think <laughs> maybe if they have an idea and a, you have a, an hour and walk them through everything. You might get people who might say, "Yeah, now I'm really interested," and we'll go into with more enthusiasm. Or you might have people going, eh. and those tend to be the ones that probably, if you appointed them, wouldn't stay on or be as productive. So just an idea. Great way to set expectations. Yeah, if I could add on to that, we used to have interviews way way back. People came in and introduced themselves, and I want to be on way it. Back. Yeah, we're definitely going to do that again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it would be important. Just yeah. I agree. And I think that we've established for sure we're going to have interviews that are consistent for everybody. So everybody gets the same same questions. Deb, did you want to ask I, I No, I just want to ask a question about something that was said. Um, you said a town resident or a business owner. In town. A business owner in town. For whatever reason, I think there's a rule that says to serve on a board, you have to be a resident of the mm -hmm. town. Except the Chamber of Commerce rep. Because mm -hmm. right. they're voted on by the chamber. Oh, sorry, through the chair. They're voted on by the chamber of commerce, mm -hmm. and they send us a rep. I, I don't know what the bylaw says, to be honest with you, on that point. I would have to check. Yeah, to but that. I, I appreciate. Think that's not a I appreciate. Town resident, right? What's that? Thanks, Scott's not a town resident. Not anymore. He was yeah. for a long time, um, and so it probably didn't. You know, but there are certainly town residents on the chamber too. So it's, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, we should just find out the piece of information. Deb, go ahead. Hi. Yeah, well, I agree with almost everything that everybody said and contributed. Um, I think what I wanted, would like to add is um, I was on Zach as well for the first time, and it was sort of overwhelming. It's, I think that the quantity of material was so varied and different, it was really hard to grasp. Um, so I, I have to admit, I didn't enjoy every part of it. Um, but what I think how we could help is that preliminary training session. I think defining exactly what we're going to accomplish and having that extend one and two years because I think our master plan in the, for the planning board has quite a few issues that need to be uh, sort of progressed throughout one or two years. Um, and, and they're just so important that we can't afford to, to miss them. Um, and I was just going to touch upon and, and agreeing with uh, Matt Kisner on, um, on several of those things, having the, the, the planning board have a firm role in how those sessions are developed so they're structured and, 
and that newbie member would have a better grasp on what we're going to be talking about that day, that week and so they can come prepared with that stack of information that could potentially help um, and guide the, the team to their decision. Um, I liked it being um, a little bit larger than seven people. I thought nine to 11, only in that you, it will welcome the newer members um, and um, different voices, um, a more diverse community. Um, I'm really looking forward to that, um, seeing that in Hopkinton um, play out. Um, I think, so, so in, in delving into how we would create this overall basis from the master plan, I think that um, creating a sheet of guidelines of, ter I mean, I, I would think maybe even breaking into groups at some point where everybody's kind of lifted up on a table and we're creating boards with ideas um, of how we're going to develop um, um, the pr um, preservation that the Facilitates. I'm looking, I'm, I had done a list through the uh, master plan of things that we have haven't talked about um, preservation, um, how and how it can facilitate growth in our town, um, um, of how we can further encourage business development, um, how we can um, further help uh, people understand what we're talking about in our meetings. I mean, just that basic overall overriding concept of the worksheets that. Um, that we've sort of begin to <coughs> began to use as me as a newbie on the planning board as well. Um, they were really great, but synthesized them um, t with the newbies because they were they're our sounding board, um, and I think really um, look forward to hearing their input. Um, oh, and how we can improve that sort of the preservation aspect um, and um, plays into how we can facilitate growth versus and economic growth. Um, how we can redevelop some of the some of um, of, of the of the byways that are, are lesser developed, but in a nice way. How we can continue what our forefathers have done in, in our structure um, of in their business areas, um, and how we can further deeper deeper conversations with other committees, the board of selectmen, um, the. Um, trails committees and conservation um, and how we can tap those resources in in perhaps in an engineering study and incorporating those plans I don't know if I brought them um, but they're rather insp inspiring um, larger planning guideline um, that they have in the planning department synthesizing them and putting them like inside the, the master plan I thought I brought it but I guess I missed that but synthesizing that, that and putting putting that in the back of the book. Um, so so making some really nice additions um, and developing the goals of Zach, I think would be wonderful. Um, and so in, in, my, in, in my finishing statement, um, yes, I think we need to be a one to two year board in order for us really to meet our goals. Um, but it's all very exciting stuff, so. Thanks, Deb. How about you, Fran? Thank you. <laughs> That was good. Yeah, a lot yeah. of good stuff. Thank you. Um, so I will agree with many of the comments that uh, our distinguished guests have uh, already articulated. I'll keep it relatively short, year-round, definitely. Uh, one and two-year terms, absolutely. Um, I think the training before the interview process is a great idea. I think that's going to reduce the, the scope of people that want to come on board. I do agree with Rhea to some degree that I think some people jumped on Zach thinking it was their opportunity to kind of have their voice heard for 15 minutes and then some of them didn't show up for half the meetings. So I think if we can kind of really, and I think, you know, having the term limit and having the you know, associate member is gonna be able to do a lot of that for us. So that kind of gets the group to the table. I think once that group is at the table, it's gonna be really important that we're closely with the chair but I think going back and looking at the issues, taking them almost in a lean slash agile type of environment, look at one or two, be able to report them back. Because in the past, what we've done is we put them in a nice package, John, and we've got them here for the planning board to review, and the board had maybe two meetings or three meetings to go over. In some cases, it was five, six, eight different ideas. I think kind of moving that through in a I'll use the term piecemeal, but hey, here's two that have been approved. And then if there's questions from the planning board, which oftentimes there are, if we had to go back to Zach, 
we had to bring the chairman back. You know, we had to kind of look at what the scope was. I think if we're doing it in the context of a year-long program, it's, that dialogue just flows that much easier back and forth. Um, and I think, you know, I'll just echo some of the comments of the people. I think determining what are the key criteria from this board to uh, Zach that they should focus on for that period is going to be key. Uh, you know, I think having maybe five elements that go in front of town meeting is probably the right thing. I'd rather kind of go in there loaded with those five as opposed to try to hit, you know, nine out of whatever. You, you know, making two out of ten is not going to get you the Hall of Fame. Um, I think if you can go with five and have some strong material, you have a much better chance. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, Zach, the planning board, the initiatives that we put on the warrant or the ballot are ones that we would ideally like to see pass. And I, I think it's, I'd rather, again, go in there with five strong as opposed to uh, many and not having as uh, a tight, I think, uh, uh, a package or an argument with those. Um, yeah, but I think this is all good. And, and a final comment in terms of members from Chamber, ZBA, um, mm -hmm. Common Comp Planning Board. There has to be some balance in there. I mean, I do think a, a max at about 11. I don't think you put necessarily, it has to be 11, but I think somewhere in there, I think we've talked nine or 11. But I do I do like a balance of maybe a third of the people coming from somewhere else and the remaining people being outside. Um, newbies or. So do we typically have somebody from Concom? No, I mean, that was an okay. interesting idea. Used to. You know, we used to, right? Yeah. I think I remember somebody yeah. used to. We just couldn't get anybody on there. And it's an interesting. I think Concom thinks that they have a member outside. <laughs> do they? Well, they you're do. a, That's you're a Con -Con Con -Con this year, and Jim yeah. Sorella played mm -hmm. it for a couple of years ago. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'd like that balance. Okay. Craig Nation. Craig. Yeah. Yes. Was Concom. Yeah. So, but anyway. Okay, but make, to formalize it, I, don't, I didn't know that we form, formalized it, but that's it. Okay, that's interesting. Well, I'm, I want to get around the table, John. We're, we're charging through the, the hour. Amy. Okay. I agree with a lot of what's been said. Um, I agree having it be year-round and having one or two or even three-year terms staggered sounds great. Um, I love the idea of associate members so that you can still have a good balance of new people and people who've done it before. I'm leaning towards the group size of voting members of 9 to 11, looking at the history of how many have been on it in the last few years. Uh, if you can just uh, run down the history for us. So in 2014 it was 10, 2015 was 13, 2016 was 9, 2017 was 19, but one person resigned mid-year, so they, it was 20 at the beginning of the year. Um, let's see. Oh, I would suggest that we have it recorded by HCAM, because I remember last year when the planning board came to vote on the zoning issues, I had questions I'm like, how did they reach this conclusion? I would have really liked to have been able to go back and watch the tape, and not necessarily televised live, but just recorded so that it could be watched later. I do think that um, we are doing that more and more, and it is extremely beneficial for everybody to be able to stay um, invested and involved in the conversation, so I think that's a great suggestion. If it's possible to know, I think it would be good to, when we send the announcement out, let people know the days the days of the meeting so they have a, an expectation of whether they're actually going to be able to attend. And I'm not sure they were consistent dates in the past. Uh, so maybe that can't be known, but if it's easier to sign up for something if you know it's a day of the week that you know you can make. Um, I definitely want to encourage diversity on the board by people from all different areas of town, new people and people who have been here a long time. So that's one reason for including the associate members that can't vote if maybe they're new but they could still offer something i think a lot more publicity especially if we have a clear outline of when we're going to discuss when and exactly when people can give input on what topics just needs to be out there a lot a lot more that people can give their input early so we get to town meeting and there aren't so many questions that we're surprised by um Oh, a suggestion for the non-residents if the chamber member or someone is a non-resident we could consider making them a non-voting member I believe the elementary school building committee did that. I think the superintendent didn't actually get a vote on the committee because she was not a resident. Um, so we could consider that. I think everything else I think has been said, so I'm not going to repeat. <laughs> oh. So Frank said he'd be short. I mean, sorry, Fred, but <laughs> I will be much shorter than you. <laughs> I am. I'm an IT techie guy, so I'm very terse and to the point. Um, and also, I think I might be the only one that's never been on the Zach board. Is everybody? I haven't been, oh, been on yeah, the so you and I. Mm -hmm. I've been on the ZBA, but I haven't been okay. on Zach. Mm -hmm. So, um, I've heard all good ideas. I haven't heard any bad ideas. So, you know, like Amy said, a lot of the stuff has been said before. Um, you know, 9 to 11 members sounds good. If you make it 9, same size as the planning board, that might work. Um, year round, year round sounds good. 
um, alternate members that works as well too. What else am I missing there, Mira? Uh, I'm going to make the obvious point that some one of us doesn't have an extra job, so this is your moment to shine and maybe take the leadership role. <laughs> Isn't that a different meeting? <laughs> help us shape. That's a different meeting. That's a different meeting. Uh, but but it, the, uh, the, the shorter amount for the um, town meeting, you know, yeah. obviously being focused. and uh, I like the idea of more involvement between the two boards with the planning board kind of guiding what the Zach does mm -hmm. and the Zach reporting back to the mm -hmm. planning board just mm -hmm. to say say the full loop. So that's pretty much all I have. Okay, thank you very much. John, coming back to you, you had a point. Uh, just an idea from some of the outside boards uh, coming through is if we want participation of other board members, maybe the ZBA person and the planning board person are advisory and not voting. So it's maybe nine voting members and then if you have more CONCOM, et cetera, they're advisory and that they either support the group, but the group, you know, they're not one of the voting members. They can participate in the discussion, et cetera, but that way you have that core group. So Zach is an advisory board, so they'd be advisories to the advisory? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're starting to get how this can go bad really fast. Um, yeah, hold on one second. I just wanted to just run through and see if um, I had had the opportunity to um, say all of the thoughts that I had were big. Um, and I think that that is true. Um, the only question I had that nobody talked about um, was it contingent that was mentioned specifically as an idea was a contingency to replace non-attending members I don't I'm right. not entirely enthused about that idea unless it's a problem and then there is a mechanism to address that um, generally in the charter but I just throw it out there I appreciate that you have an idea but I'm gonna go to hold it on hold. that point specifically yeah yep. yes um, I don't think we should replace them, but I think that there needs to be something around reducing the, the official number. You know, if somebody is not attending and hasn't resigned officially, we need to be able to remove them. That seemed to be a problem last year, and it had to do with, you know. Just to follow up with that. So Maybe you can just change their, their voting status. Well, uh, just throw that out well, there for people to. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to say yeah. that will bring you to an even number. Yeah. That will be a problem. No, I, there's all yeah. kinds of considerations, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. If you if you remove somebody and don't replace them, then you are. Yeah, I realize that, but at the same time, you know, this is, and at the Zach, I don't think it's as critical to have an odd number, because. First of all, we're, we're discussing these things ad nauseum, and then once we vote, it's generally all you know. It's generally close to unanimous. Um, it's not going to be a five-four decision, <laughs> you know. Um, and you if it is that. a five-four decision, highly likely that it probably shouldn't go forward anyhow, because you know that the, you know, after it goes through then the planning board and then that's the town that's meeting. That's actually I mean, a really excellent just, point, yeah. right? If you can't get if the we're representing the, the town, yeah, no kidding. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's a that's a pretty key point, actually. If you can't bring the committee to a two thirds at least, then you know town why, meeting. Why? Why would you take it to town meeting? No kidding. Yeah. All right. So yeah. On some committees, the alternate members can vote in the absence of. Yeah. Them. So that might solve the. That might solve. Yep. We can do it. And just, I would hope that. We could make it teethy enough that our drive and our goals are something that somebody wants to come every week. That's and what. That's <laughs> what we all know. <laughs> you know that that we give them enough uh, ownership. Well, I do think that um, of of the responsibility of a certain section, you know, or something. I actually think baseline people who um, show up to volunteer usually are fairly motivated. I think it's an exception to the rule mm -hmm. when it's. Um, it, when it becomes a real concern, so um, you had something. Yeah, else so and just one more comment on attendance too. Just because they don't show up doesn't mean it's by choice. Yeah, no, right. So Very there's true. a lot of people that right. have other commitments or yeah. work commitments or things yep. that they can't do. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I, I'm just curious to get perspective from the group. What the the I guess the one thing I, I think we're all pretty much in agreement on a lot of these things. The yeah. one thing that I'm a little torn on though. You know, if we acknowledge that this is really a strategic group that we want them to have to be, you know, thinking out ahead and thinking about the master plan and, and 
how we pick and choose the issues that we want to tackle, that's not something that I would normally put to a, a newer or less experienced group of people. You know, if I was in the workplace and I had some sort of, I mean, to me, that's almost sort of a strategic advisory committee in a sense. That's a group of people that I want. I want the, the, the veterans, the people that, that um, know our town, that know how to get things done, that know how to move things through, that, that have the history. And, and this is coming from someone that was on, you know, as an advisory committee my first time last year and mm -hmm. was a learning experience. But I, I just, I struggle a little bit because while on one hand, I, I think it's great that it's an opportunity for new people to get engaged. I also wonder to some degree if that board is going to function at a higher level if we have a more seasoned crew that, that's, that's on it. So I'm curious to hear if other people have So I, on I that. do have a couple of thoughts on that. When people were talking, um, one of the things that the Zach enjoys that not every board or committee enjoys when people jump in to start is professional staff support. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is really um, very mm -hmm. key and mm -hmm. can't go forward without the professional staff. Mm -hmm. um, I, think, um, I think it was Mary who made the point that um, there's a vibrancy that comes with new voices and new ideas and different kind of thinking. We've seen it on this planning board um, real time with our new members that are new to this process. And it's, it's, it's exciting and it's energizing and it's, I think, actually really important, speaking for myself. Um, I think that there's a lot of wisdom also in having um, some members who have, um, have seen a few seasons in town government, right? Um, and I think that the only way to encourage the diversity that I also want to see is to uh, make sure that there are places um, for new voices. Um, so I th I'm, I'm very much in favor, personally, of some slots for, for people who are new to uh, town government. It doesn't mean they have to have never done anything, um, but uh, I think that I think that a, a striking about striking, yeah. striking yeah. balance. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, Dave. Sorry, two quick comments. Yeah. Gary pointed out the uh, attendance thing, and it just made me think that I thought we talked about making it a set night of the week so that would help people plan better. So I, I struggle with that a little bit. Um, do you, uh, do John, or what, Gary, what are think, you thinking? If I may, to the chair. Um, one of the things that, that um, happened with Jack, and I mentioned it before because of all the holidays, we had to jump and then in between uh, you know people's schedules because you know people everybody has lives and and to try and work it around and say okay we go around the table all right we have to get up we need 11 people for the next meeting who can come on monday who can come on tuesday who can come on wednesday let's go three meetings out let's go three meetings out and that's and that's how we ended up having to set it up just to make sure that we could have get the 11 at the time or, or, or seven or nine, whatever it is. But that's why, and as I said, when there were only 10 meetings, we want, we want it to be accommodating to everybody. And if I may, may just one more thing about when we're talking about di di the uh, diversity on it. I remember for, for several years, if, if one could convince um, Sandy, Mavis, and Michael Purse, you knew it was gonna get, it was gonna get through town meeting. <laughs> And that was, and that's the most important thing about Zach is to have the, 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 a, a total diversity, a diversity in where people live, a diversity in age, diversity in how many years people were here, because that's what we're going to hit at town meeting. And when we could get to, when 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 stuff would go through and be hammered out and and vetted, and, and at the end we get a a, a a unanimous, as Mary was talking about. That's that's when it always felt good, and we knew we'd get it wouldn't get too beat up on at uh, planning board. Just a quick follow up. I wasn't sure if you were supporting this at one day of the week, same day of the week. No, the well, I, I just don't know if it's if 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 it really you know it all depends on how professional we, that, that you want to make, and that's why it's so important again to as to uh, Gary's point to have to have a core because you um, to have a, a too new a board, um, people may start going down a path that, that uh, may not get through Attorney General, may not get get through Georgia, may not get through Seattle. But specific not, but yeah. specific to attendance though, if you had a day of the week well, we you wouldn't Saturday? sign up you wouldn't sign up for that board if you knew you had a conflict on that. To, yeah. Can I Sure, go ahead. Sorry. If you have someone from Z B A planning board, yeah. Mm -hmm. Concom, yep. Chamber. Chamber. 
Selectmen. There's no selectmen. Nights. There's not a lot of nights left in the week that somebody doesn't have a meeting. That you're not excluding somebody. So you either have to pick a board that you're okay with not being there, or it ends up being the who can make this date kind of thing. And you can't really pick a date day of the week unless you're willing to exclude one of those players that you wanted in there. But you can exclude them one way or the other because you're going to have meetings. But they you don't, don't meet exclude them for all of them. Oh. Right, they don't meet every week. Just to refresh my memory, what are the boards that have a spot on ZBA? To I was just, I, or, I mean, on Zach. So I, I was just writing that down. So correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's the ZBA, it's, it's the CONCOM, it's the chamber, which is not necessarily board, but it, the, the chamber, um, uh, and the planning okay. board are traditionally. Um, CONCOM, con con Chamber of Commerce, Planning Board, and ZBA. Yeah. Is yeah. yeah. Board of Health was on there for a while. No, no, it no, it's just those so I mean, in, in all cases, right? The board of health. I mean, the if if the Zach was entertaining something that that bumped up against an issue that was pertinent to the board of health, you'd need to reach out and and invite the board of health in for the sure. conversation. Um, I I was wondering if we could take a shot at um, some structural elements tonight. And then I'll capture the comments and so forth, and then we take another bite at it um, to formalize it. Just one quick comment. Absolutely. I didn't get a chance to. I also want to mention Mary yeah. was talking about. Um, I think people, the, the number, the odd number in the voting, and you brought up two thirds. Um, would it be beneficial to have nine because then six, three would be easily figured out? I, I don't know. I thought it up there. I'm sorry. Say, say it again. If it's a two thirds vote. Having nine members, you know if it's six, you need you, six. You, you can actually do the math. Right, right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, like the old moderator used to say, take works. the bottom number the divided by two. No matter what. <laughs> but I like just it. throwing it out there. Um, all right, so I'm going to take a shot at just some big pieces and, and asking the board members to just weigh in yay or nay so we get maybe a majority um, on the big pieces. Um, I wrote down nine members and three associate slots. Is that seem like it could be workable, allow space for um, new people, de designated people. Just raise a hand for yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, just raise your hand yes. if you're okay with nine and three. So nine, um, nine voting members? Nine voting members, three associate slots. So nine is, is your top, right? Yeah. It's okay yeah. if it's not nine. I'm just saying. I'm asking. Like 11. <laughs> I'm okay with six to vote. Oh yeah. I was gonna yeah. say I was okay with the nine number, but um, like if we get that means if we get 20 people that apply, we will have to cut people. And I didn't know if we wanted to have a greater number of associate members. So when we vote on the nine uh, first. Well, uh, so, okay. primary, so no, don't be sorry. That's what yeah. this whole process is about. That this is what we're doing here. So that's fine. Um, is is 11 better? You didn't vote either. So is 11? But what's better? Is 11 better for voting members? No. I'm okay with either 9 or 11, but I'd like to see more associates okay, to give see? people the, the okay. opportunity okay. to come in and, okay. and talk. So, uh, 9 or 11? 9? Sounds like everybody was okay with 9. 9 voting, nine. Nine voting nine members? Voting. Fine. 9 voting. Uh, and uh, so shoot out a number of associate five. slots. 5. I hear 5. 5? Five. Okay. five. okay. All right. Up to five, right? There could be, in theory, you could have less. Right. Oh, yes. Yeah. We'll see if we get that many. <laughs> right. That's right. what I mean. Two right. years right. past, we've had so. So up to five. Voting, so. Is that, that fair? Yeah. Not up, up to, to five. five. Don't need to show up. Depends on what we decide tonight. We might only have three members. Um, do we want to specifically have slots for the ZBA, the CONCOM, the Chamber, and the Planning Board? I, th I think we necessarily, I, I feel we necessarily have to, but. How many were those? Four? That's four. four. And they would be voting? Ooh. So that's open. That's question. Yeah, that's open. Should we? I mean, I say at minimum there has to be a planning board liaison. Yeah. Yep. I don't think they necessarily have to be a voting member, but they but we have to have an advisory member. Yep. There. Okay. How about um, any of the others? I think ZBA I like is ZBA. for me. It's a lock on Absolutely. ZBA. ZBA, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and. Uh, Concom and Chamber. Concom and Chamber are the ones that I have listed. 
Anybody have big opinions? I thought I heard from these guys that it was important to have the business represented with the Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'm I asking so. what, yeah, what I'm the board fine. feels. Okay, yeah. So. So my, my personal opinion is I feel very strongly that if you're going to vote on items concerning zoning in the town of Hopkinton, that you need to be a resident of the town. I also I share agree. that. I agree with that. I agree with that. If the chamber can't provide a resident, then they should be a non-voting member. I agree. But I think the chamber should be involved. All right. So I, there's I <coughs> and Gary and Carol. And, yeah. How are you? All right. Fine. All right. So we're in agreement on that. Okay. Um, ConCom, I think um, honestly, ConCom is a, is a value add in this mm -hmm. discussion of um, yes. uh, zoning. I to be, I, I mean, that's why that's why I, I listed that. those four. <laughs> I agree with that. So, uh, does anybody have any uh, objections or any thoughts? Fine. Necessarily a, a voting member or not necessarily a voting member? I think that that's still open. I mean, I don't think we have to have it. So it sounds like we're all okay with those four okay. mm -hmm. being members right. of the board, right? So, so that means we're holding slots for them specifically, right? So, so that so does change, so right? Your base only, number. So, does people still feel confident with nine, or does eleven feel better? Mm -hmm. I, if I may, to the chair, I, I think that they, you know, having five possible new members, you know, to have nine new members and four advisories could be could be problematic to try and get things. We're not even on the new versus uh, experience. Oh, no, well, I was just saying that, that to have, to, if you're going to have nine, to have four people that uh, that have been voted on from their committees, yep. then those those are committed people that know what's going on in their, in their um, uh, areas of expertise. So you're saying the four should be part they, of the nine? They, they should be part right. of the nine. I, I, I believe that. so. All right. Just want to point out that the people appointed by their boards could also be brand new, like a brand new they could business be. owner. Yeah, they could, they could be. Yeah, sure. uh, at Witness, I was a brand new uh, liaison to the Appropriation Committee, and they were not impressed with the board <laughs> selection when that happened. Um, however, I turned out to be a value add. I'm just going to make that point. Um, so are we still okay with nine if we're four of them? are designated as a board appointees and then five at large I'm okay with that I, sounds good okay mm -hmm. yeah, well, there you go. I'm also okay with 11 I, but I don't know how people I prefer nine I like nine yeah okay all right so um, we're, look at us go um, so um, I want people to give some thought to how we will with sensitivity and foresight um, address uh, balancing the diversity question and the diversity question is so broad based to me and I want to make sure that we have you know cultural diversity and um, age diversity John you mentioned but you know history in town new to town that diversity seems really important to me um, I think that we have probably experience in town government at least addressed with four ap appointed members. Somebody has, has probably got um, experience in town government, um, and we have professional staff. Um, I don't think I, I don't think I can solve that puzzle tonight. If anybody has a brilliant idea, uh, but I think if we could all think about what that means in terms of setting our guidelines for appointments. Um, that would be helpful. Didn't you have some easier questions, low hanging fruit that you yep, want to Yep, I do. I do. I do, Dave. Just for you. Here it comes. Um, did you want to say something? Uh, just one question on that, though. I mean, I, 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 I'm wondering if, if there's a way to do that beyond a, a grid or a checklist of some kind. But I mean, even if we all just, I mean, as we go through the selection process for this, I feel like there's some ways that we can. I guess I just there's a, there's a lot of give and take when you're talking about like to your point diversity means a lot of different things. It makes a lot of different and, things. And, and I'd hate to establish a criteria where we have to have X and Y and Z. I mean, I just I I feel like it's, it can be done in a more And I don't be the one establishing way. the criteria, right? I think that there's an opportunity to reach out, um, particularly to new um, new uh, residents in town that represent different diversity. It would be nice to do some recruiting. I think. Mm -hmm. um, to be honest, but I don't know that that's the whole answer, Mary. Um, and just to that, to that whole point of of, uh, of finding the diversity, I think that if we can ask people to outline, okay, precinct. Well, we can find that out from their address, but um, uh, 
new residents, how long they've been in town, um, um, what experience they have in town government. A mm -hmm. lot of those things are just real quick little lines that they can put on an application. Mm -hmm. Occ occupation and education? Yeah. Hold on a second. But, I, but I, you know, I also caution us not to limit ourselves to, to right. people who have specific <coughs> occupations, I, you know. No, so, yeah. yeah, but like I could just see myself saying, well, there has to be somebody from every precinct in town, and then you have four attorneys because they yeah, the exactly. only ones that lived in those four different <laughs> precincts. <laughs> and you really wanted one attorney, one architect, one. Yeah. Right. What does yeah. we want? Yeah. Whatever you want. Um, I think it's very important also to state um, when we send out this invitation that there isn't any particular education that is needed no. mm -hmm. or background that is needed um, to participate in town government. That's near and dear to my heart as well. John, oh, John, yes. No, for the chair, you're talking about 14 people and the track record of 14 people, especially if you do the preliminary training to get people, you, it's almost going to be self-selecting because you're not going to get a tremendous amount more than 14 people who show up and want to do it. So I think if there's more during the interview process you kind of look and say, okay, we've got too much of a concentration. But I think it's too almost self-selecting. Too many attorneys, John, is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, that at that number of people, you're going to be really lucky to have more than 14 qualified people come up. So it's almost self-selecting. And I don't think anybody's going to be known as the old person. <laughs> right, I know. The more experienced <laughs> person. I'm actually okay. Gender age. So. <laughs> Carol. Just a question for the Zach people that have been on there for the last couple of years. How many how many returning members do you have every year? Like, what's your what's your base? You've yeah. been there forever. Ten years. Ten yeah, years. John's been there for yeah. quite a while. Yeah. I, again, I, I think it's important to learn from last year, but not put too much into last year. Last year there were tons and tons mm -hmm. of new people. Um, there were also returning that I don't think were appointed. And I certainly, over the last three, four years, have seen some of the same faces show up. Um, well, Rhea's been Rhea there for a long time. Rhea's been there forever. Did Rhea come back this year? Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Yes, yes, she was there. there. She was there. She was there. She was there. So I, I think, you know, can't in the question that comes up, we, we can't have a board <laughs> a full of times. newbies. A few right. Times. I don't think five at large positions means five newbies are guaranteed no. at mm -hmm. all. No. Right. No. Um, so I, don't, I, I don't think we disagree. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, I, think I just the don't want associates will be the newbies. And that's what it, it may very well fall that so way. And, that, and that's, probably, that's a great idea. So, I want another easy piece. You ready? Easy peasy. Easy piece. Um, I favor ultimately three year terms if we're going to have a nine member board, three, three, three. But some people said one or two years. I thought I heard two years a few yeah. times. So, I'm just saying what I favor. Yep. But, um, I think that makes sense with the nine during three, three, three. I think three is too long mm -hmm. of a commitment for a new person coming into something or even for some people. People do Zach because it's fun and, and it's a thing to say, OK, I feel like I can do it this year. To, to go into that with a three year, oh, do we, that's, do we that's need as terms? long as being a select. Do we need terms? Well, right now they're one year, so. Right, well, yeah. through the chair, yeah. I, I do think we do need terms because I think there's issues that don't get solved. I think we need to carry over. One year. There, are, there are issues. Lighting. Yeah. Huh? No, <laughs> I know. So, for example, John, the marijuana bylaw we didn't address adequately because no. we didn't have carryover. Uh, uh, you know, the, the board didn't continue meeting, and we should have known that we had to move forward on it, and we didn't. And those are the kinds of issues that I definitely want to avoid, right? I want to make sure we carry from year to year um, issues that are in front of the board that aren't necessarily brought forward to the town meeting at that time. But so, I, I interrupted Fran, so hold on. So, Everybody so hold on. Just I'm sorry. Thank you, Muriel. Um, I, I do think two-year term, a one in two years, because I think there's some people that want to want to do it for one year. I think some people are going to kind of say, yeah, I want I'm in for two years. But if people want to go in for one, so I do a staggered one year, two-year Term proposal. I, I, I would hold on, hold on. There were other people who were waiting first. Um, oh, Amy was first saying thank you. I was going to say, I presume the people appointed by their wards are one year terms anyway. They are? Yes. So, that's and I, I would think associates would necessarily be one year, makes sense. Okay. Um, the, 
I would recommend, and I know uh, people are wanting to talk, um, like five for the first term, five are two year and four are one year. So every year there's carryover and switch, not the whole board switching every two years. Right. I, I think that, yeah, just keeping in mind that even though it's one year terms for the board, they're probably going to be a fair number of people who just reapply, re opt every year. So, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's going to be yeah. carry over there. Yeah. Gary, maybe, you wanted to say that. something? I'm good. You sure? Mm -hmm. Are we are we trying to fix something that's not broken now? Do we, we have guys coming back every year? I mean, what, what's the rationale? Well, so there is a stipulation in the charter that there is a process for appointment, and we have to have a predictable reappointment process. Um, I, and I'm you know willing to be knocked off my little soapbox, I think it's important to have a couple of years and, and not a completely new board every year. That, that's, you know, I feel like that's an important piece. But to, to, I'm only one voice. To David's question, I think the, the challenge that we have now is the, the short cycle. It, so this, we've got to address year. that anyways, and one, year, mm -hmm. one way to address that is that's by true. having that's one true. and two year commitments, and that uh, that's just true. allows some continuity, and it also means we're not having to interview, you know, 15 people every single year for the following year. Good well, points. And, Good we, points. and we will also, if we see what we have seen, returning people, we aren't necessarily in a big interview cycle again each each year anyway, yep. right? Um, no, I'm good with that. Those are good. Okay. All right. So let me just say, nine members, First, the first appointment, there'll be five for two years, four for one year, and, and this time, it, you know, it'll be easily be the ZBA, the CONCOM, and the... Well, they're always going to be. They're always going to be. Right. So then the right. others so will we always save be two. Those. So no. that's not going to be staggering. No, it sound, sounds like we need to divide them into two things. Yeah. Um, one is the um, is the the board appointments. Yeah. Those, those are, are those are the yeah. four people. Okay, I got they you. They always have one. Yeah. Year. Okay. Yeah. So it's only the other five that we're yeah. dealing with. Yep. So three. So and then two. we say those are two year terms, but the first time we're yeah. going to appoint some of them to just one yeah. year terms, so that there's cycling. Yep. Through. Yeah. So okay, three for two year, two for one year, this first cycle, and then each year after that, it'll always be two years. And, associate. and then the four associate yeah. members are one just year. one year. One year. Yes, that's what I, I was yeah. thinking too. Okay. Um, all right, we are a little bit over time, but I appreciate everybody's. Um, uh, we we are agreed that we should have some formalized training early. Should it be before we appoint people or at the first meeting after appointment? Both. Okay. <laughs> One should be, as John suggested, an orientation before you're getting into this. I don't know how we enforce that. But the second is, after appointment, the first meeting has to be training. It has to be comprehensive. Now we know who, we're, who we've got on the board. You've already had the orientation, you know, that you signed up for, you know, but, but this is, this is, you know, and that, that could be much more specific. You know. So I don't think that we will get people to do a training if they aren't sure that they're going to have a slot. To that point, maybe don't call it training. Or you maybe you just call it a what is what it's all introduction ZBA 101 so when you have a form you have a cover sheet on the form that describes kind of the things that we, we're going to do what we're going to accomplish I, I think you could do it as like a big kind of open meeting introduction this is what we're yes trying to introduce and and bring up and it, it's more than just a paragraph that describes what CBA is about what your role is. It's an interactive discussion. Carol, I think to your point, it could be in this a forum like this. Meet the candidates. Well, the candidates <laughs> meeting, it's not so much meet the candidates, it's where the candidates can kind of meet uh, you know, the current chair or maybe past chairs and just really explain what the commitment is about for the next year or two years. What are some of the issues and kind of so they get a better understanding around what they're potentially signing up for. And I think that's going to I'll say weed some people out. Some people say, yeah, that's cool, but maybe not for me because I've got commitments or work, it's going to take me away. Others are going to be totally jazzed and want to be a candidate for and go through the interview process. That's a good point. It's two way. So, so I'll just provide a different commentary on yeah. I, I'm fully agreeing with what Fran is saying, and I think that that's a, a great way to 
to, to, to flush people out, but also give them some perspective as to what they're, 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 they're what's expected of them, what they're going to be doing. But um, I don't think any amount of training is a substitute for once you get into the details and you start learning. And, and so I just, the first couple of meetings are always going to be painful. That's, that's part of the process. And, and to build out a training program that's going to eliminate that, I think is, is such a heavy lift that I'm not convinced that, that having a, a training program after the fact, you know, maybe there's some other things they can do. Maybe there's some recommendations. Maybe there's some things like, you know, read the master plan. Here's the zoning guidelines. But again, you could read the zoning guideline, the, the zoning bylaws. You know, number one, good luck staying awake. And, 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 and two, if you haven't been through it, you just don't have an appreciation for what that is. So. But I think you can, sorry. Nope, that's it. Sorry, um, to the chair. Um, I, I think that uh, you can come a long way to describing it, though. So I, I understand what you're saying, but I think you come a long way to describing it by doing case in point. Like, what did they do last year? What did we do last year? Why did we enjoy it? What was good about it? What wasn't so good about it? And what's going to change? I mean, so if you have that kind of open dialogue, I think people, you can grab people and their interest. Because it was, it was pretty neat stuff, right? We were talking about, you know, what is the night sky community? What is, you know, so we had a lot going on that we really, some of us newbies didn't know that's what we were going to be talking about, but it was really exciting. Um, and I think if we gave them a little bit of a preview, um, and, and I'd love to know what happened in the last 10 years. I have no idea. You know, so if, if we got John's expertise going in there, you know, that we could, you know, move forward um, so, with so, the more exciting so what I am work. okay with is, is is if it's a summary of uh, it's a summary of activities and, and maybe it's a summary of what the planning board has designated as key areas of focus or key topics yeah. moving forward mm -hmm. I'm totally okay with that with using it to set direction mm -hmm. and help align people with what the objectives are mm -hmm. I just uh, to some degree it's just it's always going to be a little painful the first the first sure. go around you, even, even Rhea's points where my first two years, I was a quiet member. I was listening. I was learning. You know, I've heard I've heard Ted say the same thing about ConCon. Like, that's just that's part of the process. And and I, I just am hesitant. But formalized trainings are also part of the process. Yeah, for sure. And um, and setting an expectation and implementing it for me feels important. But I am you know. I, I see your points, Mary. I'm sorry. The form that the training takes, I think, is the point you're trying to make. And, you know, and how formal and how do we take up, you know, a full three-hour meeting with it or something like that. And I, I don't see it that way at all. I see it more as, you know, the, the basics that, um, that so many of us, you know, last year were like, oh, such as zoning bylaws are not um, grandfathered. So it only applies to things going forward, building going forward. Um, things like the, the some of the basic um, legal um, issues that have come up. You know, so, some real basic things that that people should know, but do, will not necessarily know by just reading um, the bylaws or reading the EHOP summary of what the zoning advisory committee is or anything like that. So it's a, just a little bit more in depth. That's the way I see it. And I, I do think that we need to, you know, flesh that out more, but that can be done offline, I really think. So, so yep. I had a thought of just not, not making it too long, but either the first meeting or before the first meeting, like 60 to 90 minutes <coughs> orientation type training with those basics. And if some, I don't know if we should even require that if someone can't attend that, that they just certify that they watch the video before they can vote, like especially these voting members. I don't know. Or do we consider making it a condition of getting on the board that they've already attended this I, training? I, I don't know. Can I speak? Yep. I think we're getting way too far into it. Okay. I think you need to have a meeting before people sign up for it. You need to tell them what the expectation is. You need to tell them what they do. You can give them a couple of examples. It needs to be less than a half an hour, or people are going to get bored and go home. Mm -hmm. Or not show. And Never it's a show. sales pitch. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Pitch. It's a sales pitch to get people that like, are enthusiastic and want to do the right job. And to understand what, what they're signing up for. And I agree with, with Mary in the fact that there's stuff that you should know when you're on Zach, but you can, a cheat sheet would work for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, just Absolutely. fun facts you should know. Zoning's not grandfathered. Yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot of. You're right. A cheat sheet could do, could do it. And, but that's not the kind of thing that I would have beforehand. You know, the half an hour beforehand before you apply. But then there's the. You're on the board. This is. These are some basics. You know. Yeah. So let me ask this. 
Um, this is awesome, everybody. I really appreciate this. Um, uh, uh, intro, a detailed intro at the night when we invite people forward. Um, to, so we, we are inviting people to put their names in the hat for our one meeting in August. So, um, a, you know, a detailed introduction from somebody who has lovely perspective. <laughs> <laughs> would be amazing if uh, and then um, at least a cheat sheet orientation I would like to include the availability of trainings that would be pertinent to Zach members if they wanted to avail themselves of it um, and then we would necessarily have to go one more step forward and um, do the work to provide real guidance expectations like three to five or five to seven articles for town meeting uh, yeah, I've heard so I feel like this is an iterative process but can we agree that that a detailed orientation sales pitch but so people know what they're getting into if they are brand new can um, we fit that into a meeting though the, what meeting you said the appointing meeting mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, that's the question, right? It is mm -hmm. totally the question. I think that would be a great idea because we're we're all here for, for our next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It, it yeah. would be the next meeting. Yep. Yeah. In a month. That would be tough. I don't think it has to be a half hour. No. 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 no absolutely. I like the idea. Okay. Of Fifteen minutes is. Yeah, 15 I minutes think is more than enough. And then invite, so, but the invitation needs to go out. Well, that, right. So we are going to be advertising the position. Right, right. So, okay. So, fifteen minutes introduction and maybe a handout that they're given. Well, the it, the that handout doesn't have to be available at next meeting. We can work on that, or and have it ready for their their first meeting. Is that mm -hmm. you can you're going to mm -hmm. advertise that you're selecting candidates for it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Maybe just a brief and paragraph. And just tell them that to, to do that, they need to be at the meeting by such and such a time, and then just give them a spiel. Yeah. Does that work? All right, so uh, you have a challenge, Georgia <laughs> and Kobe, um, as far as um, structuring this meeting. So maybe, so mm -hmm. A, do we have the big pieces in place or am I missing a big piece? So do we need to vote on these big we pieces? We do. Okay. Especially because yeah. they need to be on the posting. Yep. So it's yep. good to so have So I, I just want to ask if everybody can sort of check their notes and see if there's a big piece that we're missing as far as being prepared to post and structure the interview process. Yeah. Yeah. Year round, you got it. Year round. Year round. So we're, we're going to be looking for ten candidates. So uh, let like me six. let me review what yeah. I got for notes. Okay. So it will be what we're voting on is nine members and five associate members. Up to. Up to yes. yes, thank you. Up to five associate members. The associate members will be one year slots. Um, specific board uh, sp slots of that, that nine will be ZBA, CONCOM, the chamber, it needs to be a resident, and a planning board member. Um, the other five appointees, this will be two year appointments going forward, but this first year, three will be two years and two will be one year. Mm -hmm. um, we are committed to, um, uh, in the interview process, trying to um, sensibly um, appoint a diverse yeah. board that represents as many different uh, needs and concerns and uh, perspectives as possible. Um, and um, we will have prepared at that meeting a brief, no more than 15 minutes, orientation, sales pitch. This is what the Zach is going to do. Zach 101. Zach 101. I actually wrote Zach 101. Carrie, I'm telling you. Um, Who's going to prepare that? And that well, hold on. I don't think that has to be part of the vote, but it's definitely okay. a key conversation piece. Yeah. Um, and then um, we are also committed to creating a <coughs> cheat sheet of sorts. And actually, we should all spend some time thinking about what would have helped us um, as we got started and, um, and develop at least suggestions for the cheat sheet. And I would be open to um, Zach members with experience also um, 
providing that feedback if they were willing to put a little time to just you know bullet things that would be nice to know to start if, if I may through the chair one of the things that that really has to be considered is um, that uh, and whether it's first or second meeting that we usually work on where the public comes in with their concerns and they bring them to Zach now I'm wondering if that should actually come to the planning board as opposed to Zach to be vetted where there are two professionals because that's where sometimes things things the general bylaw changes come in where they should be stopped by by the planning board and say oh no 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 that doesn't come to us and as opposed to Zach cleaning things up the the initial stuff should probably be coming down okay I appreciate that John that's a really good idea and I think that we think about that in the yeah, but I just want to make sure yeah, that no, when I we do the that. training session, yep. is, uh, because that I think was what frightened many, many of the new members. Some, but there were so many people came up. You, oh, you were there that with so many different things, <laughs> and, and whether or not it should be All right, um, can people just take uh, like one minute of, of reflection and make sure that there aren't big pieces that you can think of that should be in the posting? Because we're going to be interviewing and we're going to be appointing people at the at the meeting in August and we don't meet again to talk about it before then. So I was, in the posting, can we include the, this is, I have this on EHAP, but I took it from the town website. The purpose of the Zoning Advisory Committee is to develop and review proposals for the zoning bylaw. Could just, we just add some standard language that's either from the town website or the charter describing what the Zoning Advisory Committee does? Uh, absolutely, I, I totally because agree with that as a suggestion. Um, I make the chair, there, hold there on one second. No, uh, I'm no sorry. Charter. That's the part, point. Oh, sorry. sorry. There is no what? charter. On, there is no charter for the ZAP, for ZAP. That's one of the problems. Because it's appointed I'm by so the planning board. It's not exactly okay. And that's why I say that. So if I'm sorry, but that's one of the things that that could be worked on. Right it, 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 here is actually. Are you saying it's not included in the charter? No, because that what you, that's what that's, you're saying. That's there's no, there's no charter. No, there is no charter that came down from the planning board, really for Zach. That's why it's been so informal. And that's why we right. can change it on the. So floor. that's why right. it's great that no, this right, is right, 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 yes. right. Yes, yes. So I'm sorry. And then that was a problem with your statement because you had said it was. I got it from the town website, and I'm not sure if I got it from the charter or the bylaws or Okay, where. okay. Right. <laughs> I was trying to understand. But there's a standard paragraph that's... Is um, there any objection to that standard paragraph being part of the advertisement? It makes sense I've to me. I've never seen it. I haven't seen it. Go ahead and read it. Read it. <laughs> the purpose of the Zoning Advisory Committee is to review and develop proposals for zoning bylaw and zoning map amendments, make recommendations to the Planning Board. The Zoning Advisory Committee holds an annual public hearing in the fall to hear ideas and proposals for desired changes to the zoning bylaw or map. Zoning bylaws generally regulate the use of land buildings and structures. This is an opportunity to propose changes to the land uses permitted in specific areas in Hopkinton, the manner in which certain uses are permitted, dimensional requirements, and other ideas with respect to land use regulation. When the committee finishes its work for the year, it submits its proposed zoning changes or potential zoning changes to the planning board, who then holds a public hearing in February, usually in February. That's still true, right? Even though we're changing yeah, the number I, of people. Yeah, it works for me. But it was actually the opposite. The way, the, the way it was originally started was it started here, went down, went back up. Okay. And, and what it's morphed to is it goes into Zach and then comes up. And I think that's where some of the control was lost. Mm -hmm. It's always gone through Zach first. first. No. Zach always held Zach the uh, public meeting yeah. for suggestions. No, 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 no. I, underst I understand. But, but many of the things came down from the planning board. The, the oh, in terms of the, what the direction things, to the take? Main, the, the main subjects, the, the big ones. Yeah, I think we're down. in agreement that there needs to be mm -hmm. better direction from the mm -hmm. planning the, board. Okay. They came down, the but things that, that doesn't, just didn't have time to hit. That doesn't preclude new ideas either, right. so exactly. we just need a but, process. But, I, but I'm wondering if it should come into the planning board, the new ideas. I know, we're, I, yeah. we're, we'll talk about it. I, wrote, yeah. I, I promise you, I bet you I can tell you what everybody said, and that I have written down for sure. Just a quick you should allow an opportunity uh, after the intro, the 15 minutes, to allow somebody then to reflect and decide whether to continue. Because if you're doing everything at the same time, you don't want them to have submitted their names and everybody goes, you are the candidates, et cetera, and then somebody sitting there and decide, I don't want to do it, but they were already into it. So mm -hmm. I would kind of almost deny Have a recess? Have a recess. We might have a five-minute break. If you, are, yeah. if you want yeah. to, That's not you've a heard the thing. We have for thing. If you want to continue, come up, and we'll go to the next step. 
but it doesn't embarrass somebody who is sitting there and decides what did I get myself into. No, it is a, it's an excellent point, yeah. Um, and also just an opportunity, and hopefully not too extensively, but questions and answers, right, that you would deliver this little orientation sure. spiel, and people might have um, some questions. Um, I'm just reading through all my notes one last time to make sure that we at least have the first first step in place. Are we thinking this is only going to be 15 minutes? I know. It seems like it's going to be longer. It's 15 <laughs> minutes for the orientation, right? At most. The, the little well, spiel. if they're allowed to ask questions. No, for the little spiel. Yeah. Oh. Okay. For the little spiel. Oh, okay. No more than 15 minutes. And if somebody can do it quicker, are you okay. willing to do it here? Thank you very I much. Thought That's you meant awesome. for the whole process. Me, no, 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 no. Okay. Oh, no. Yeah. Excuse me, to the chair, I have to go. Thank you very much, thank John. Thank you very much. This is very informative. Thank you. This is, it's really important to do this. really you appreciate it. You don't want to stay at midnight with us? Yeah. No. We're here till midnight. <laughs> thank you. We've got pots coming in. Uh, I really think that we have gotten... Um, we nailed it. Yeah. The big pieces, I really do. And I appreciate that that happened in one big discussion, to be honest with you, because mm -hmm. it's not easy to do something like this with a big group. Um, you're stalling for time while you're reading. You. I am <laughs> reading everybody's notes, David. I'm reading yours. So you're if you want me to skip your notes, you're I'd be happy to do that. <laughs> they should be brief. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure, I really Sorry. just wanted to make sure the big pieces yeah. um, that people were enfranchised. So I took notes on what everybody said, and we did include um, the big pieces. So I will entertain a motion that constructs that very thing that we just talked about. What For are our next pieces? meeting. I have notes, I promise. Yeah, no, yeah, Do we need to say <laughs> at what time for our next meeting? We, need we did say meeting. our next meeting is August 1st at 7 p.m. at the high school for the school is our next meeting. That's no, no, I mean for this. We don't have to have a date. Uh, we, we should set a time, but it can, it can be flexible. The agenda, yeah, so. the agenda. It's not a public hearing. Okay. So we'll be flexible with that. Okay. Right? Is that the, correct? You for the, the for setting the, the agenda time for August twenty seventh for the August twenty seventh meeting. Should we send yes. that? I I think you need to set a time well, when she when she Publishes posts it. Back. She'll have to set a time on the agenda for right. when it will when people need to arrive. We don't need but to decide we don't right have now. to do it tonight. Right. Right. No, right? No, no, no. Right. But I just thought of something. We should yeah. include a deadline for applications because last time we yeah, got there is a deadline yeah. built into the process. Last year we didn't. Well, yeah, we can just is, follow the charter process. Yeah, there is. Okay. I think we should, for okay. consistency sakes, follow the charter process. Okay. Personally. Why do you need a deadline for applications? Last time we... Because we, you have to receive them. It has to be... Uh, you have to receive them at least, what, seven days before... Ten, ten days we before... We post it for... T well, yeah, the chart... We would, for all the other committees, post it for ten days. It has to be posted at least for ten days. And it has to be announced to the public that we are holding the hearings on uh, our so the interviews the for seven days. But it necessarily... There should be an end end point for people to submit their applications mm -hmm. just we we can't just have people walking in off the street on the night of the meeting and say I, I want to do this I'm all good I'm going to do this we can't we just can't but last year we did so yes yeah, why we did why can't you yeah, people yeah, can't. That day? Yeah, we had a deadline last year and we let people skip it right actually we did have a we so as a process we've always taken our information so you know what you guys tell me <laughs> I don't actually. I don't actually functionally care. Although it feels chaotic and uh, unnecessarily chaotic to ha take uh, applications to the to the, the last hour for me. Can we say something like it's preferable to get it within seven days, or is that too wishy washy? Can we just I say a suggestion? Two or three days before. Well, I suggest we pick a deadline because people are motivated by deadlines and if, uh, applications. If we don't have fourteen applications, or. Um, and it's after the deadline, we could wait and appoint those other people at the following meeting, so everyone's had a chance to review them. But we I'm just going to say, right? if we have I'm sorry, right, yes, you're right. We a, if we have a deadline, I, I don't want to just start by being all wishy-washy. Yes, people can uh, probably join if we haven't finished, filled all the spots. That's actually an important thing to talk about, but we might how about really we find out number. how many we get, and if we have open spots. If we have open spots, should we, should we have a process now for potentially open spots? So... Just to clarify for me, you're, you're going to tell people they need to put their name in if they're interested, and then we're going to have a presentation, and we're going to say, at, at this point, if you're still interested, or if you want to further your application, just come up and we'll put you in interview order. 
I honestly don't think that we're going to weed a lot of people out with that orientation, but I suppose it's possible and it's nice to leave a moment for somebody to say, this isn't really what I thought it was going to be. Um, but I definitely think, I, I think a deadline is necessary for submitting applications, but I okay. am willing to accede to the board. I, I like a deadline. It could be 10 days, it could be two days. I do think, to your point, people are motivated by a seeing date. a date yeah. and I got to get something in. If it comes in afterwards, it could be. Two for those days. of us who are going to take some time and read, you know, resumes if they're attached or whatever, you know, same day is it? That could go out so with the package. So it's going to happen yeah, on the, the 27th oh, like the is when we're is when we're talking about when does yes. when does um the the old terms for Zach end? It's August, August 31st. 31st. So um, that means there'll be no Zach until then. If no, the old Zach August. is till the 31st. Yes. If we don't get it done on the 27th, they're, they're still in place for those yeah. four days, but, but they're not meeting come yet. September, <laughs> come September, okay, so but they can still continue, right? They could continue conceivably. So when, hopefully. what's our September meeting date? September 17th. So, so maybe well, August 27th is a long ways away still. August 27th, is, that's is, plenty of time. Is, is, I'm aiming at August 27th. I'm going to be hard pressed it. A lot of people are out of town. So people, people who, who would be maybe very interested might not. I cannot solve every puzzle, but if the board votes for it to be this is in September, the board votes. I, I know, I see you all. Look. That's that's one thing, but I I'm sticking to August 27th. But I, I can totally be flexible, John. Uh, for the chair, why don't you set it the way everybody else is? Is by 5 p.m. the Tuesday before? That's what I think. Perfect. And it's it's the standard when everything is supposed to be submitted for consideration and doing that way. And so they it's have, a standard they have date. Between now and that, when is the posting going to go out? Um, if, well, it could go out at any time once it's crafted and we know what's on it. Um, yeah. So, so, so it I would say I would say post it right away, and have that the a five o'clock deadline for the Tuesday before the meeting, like all of our materials and if are supposed to be. People cannot make the meeting; they could still post it, and not show up for the meeting, correct? So yeah, I I feel like we should consider people, um, but it it is hard to ask and answer questions when. Um, folks aren't here, so I mean, it's. I think it, we have to have that flexibility. I do too, it's but I, I, th I, th I think it, it's worth saying that it poses challenges, and if people aren't able to get to the meeting, um, we could certainly, you know, we could certainly. Uh, hopefully, we have enough. Um, you know, hopefully, it works out serendipitously, and you know, there's a spot for everybody, and they might necessarily be an associate member because they weren't able to come, but that doesn't, you know. That doesn't change their ability to participate. Mm -hmm. Highly recommended to attend. It yeah. is highly recommended to attend. Yeah, Absolutely, it's a little hard to to do it, um, although it can be done. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the posting will say we're appointing five voting members and four associate members up to no up to, up to because we're not appointing two. nine. Right. F four of them are already taken. Right. We're only appointing five. What was the point you were trying to make? Four of them. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah, no, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I no, missed the, it then, I guess. Exactly what she's yeah. saying. The four of them are already decided that, and we're only electing yeah. six. Yeah. So it is, it is a nine-member board. Yeah. There are four seats that will be taken Five, up sorry. by right. the, those designated right. sides, right? So, right. We um, so, so yes. Their boards will appoint those members. That's right. Right. So we, we will be appointing five. That's five. Five, five, five at large and up to four. Up Correct. to five associate. voting members, up to four associate members. Correct. Yes. So. Well, definitely five voting members. Only if we get that. So that's why it has to say up no. to. It's not. We'd have to. We'd have to keep working, right? Okay. We've structured it as a nine-member board. We'd have some work to do in that case. Okay. Yeah, but we could appoint the rest in September if needed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying that's what we're posting in advertising, right? We're structuring. Mm -hmm. hmm? For this first one, yeah. would they be applying for the one or the two year term then? That would have to be a part of their application, wouldn't it? Or do you guys decide who so, the one? It's really an interesting question. Um ranked in that choice case. voting. Right. <laughs> so we <laughs> ranked choice voting. Good call. I think <laughs> I think we should, you know, make sure people know that there will be um, three two year slots and two one-year slots and and up to five one-year uh, associate slots. 
My so, question is, do they then apply for a two-year spot or a one-year spot, or are you just saying submit your applications, we'll decide? Yeah, I know. I yeah, I totally I think understood you put it your on the question. application. Yeah, I think yeah. So, so. you're probably right. But, but even if it doesn't come in on the application, say it's it's incomplete in that way, I think we can address that when they're in their interview. We can say, are you comfortable with either one or two, or only one or two, or only one? I should say, <laughs> you know, so. There. Just it, it should just it definitely should detail out um, and yeah if you have a preference on the yeah. application Please if you have a preference you are. so so they can apply for both the one year and the two year mm -hmm. no, or no. say no. either acceptable mm -hmm. either no, I think one or the other right like you yeah. too. Yeah. I don't know. When we first no. had library trustees, we voted in the top vote getter got the five year or three year spot, and the next level got the two year spot and one year. I, I think you that know might what? Be I easier. definitely think that people need to give some thought to how we want to structure our voting uh, process this year. <coughs> for sure. Okay, take, take thirty seconds. Oh boy. <laughs> I think I would Our, make it, go let, the, let the chair and George maybe discuss the voting method. In I had a time. Yeah, because it would establish a voting method before we arrive at the next meeting. Are people, are people with comfortable that. with that? Yes. Yes. Cool. yes. Okay. Thank you. Wow, that's a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, awesome. All right. So, does everybody know what we're voting on? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it's been moved and seconded. Yes. Yeah. No. All right. Let's 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 take a shot at that. I have a motion. Uh, so yes. move. Oh, I need a second. <laughs> second. second. Okay. Can I just ask you a can. question? You can. In your chamber, in your discussion of your chamber member, you said he had to be or she had to be a resident I of town. Do we have a contingency to allow a non-resident of town being a non-voting member? So. We don't specifically have that contingency. We do have five associate slots that are not voting member slots. And we would invite, to Gary's point, we would invite people to participate and certainly I would expect we would give um, a representative member of a board or committee um, the opportunity to uh, make input. But we do, do not have that contingency. That's a fact. So if the chamber nominates a non-resident, are they then a non-voting? Member, and we can add an additional not at large member. You know, will the chamber have nominated their this person before government. this meeting? <laughs> <laughs> Real time, <laughs> right? It's there's always right. So, um, I think we ask for a resident. There's plenty of residents on the chamber. I think we we go we, from there. We just add, yeah. When we cross okay. the bridge, we have to. Is that fair? That's fine. Okay. All right. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Um, that vote? was actually. What's that? Could you vote? Yeah. It was an aye. Uh, that was actually really good work, you guys. It's very hard to do something like this, and we will, we will find out all the ways we didn't think of what we should have thought of. <laughs> okay. That's right. But if we all keep a happy attitude, we should be we should be fine. I really appreciate that work. Um, I'm gonna. Um, I know Kobe. You got all of these notes. Um, I, it does it help you if I transcribe what I wrote and send it to you. It would be helpful. I okay, think I'm happy to do that. It is. It. I don't do it. I don't do it in Swedish shorthand, but I'm not bad. So, um, and it's important to me to ca to capture um, the thoughts as we're looking forward to this. And Mary, thank you very much for volunteering for the sales pitch. Um, and thank thank you all for uh, thank you Mina for uh, by the way Mina for all the whole board is our school committee liaison oh. um, going oh, forward. Welcome. So, um, well, thanks for staying so long. Yeah, <laughs> she is so daddy here. She may really, not, she may not come back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I buy her coffee on a Saturday morning after these big long meetings. Yeah. Um, and truthfully, every uh, it's it's important to say that every member of every board that does an additional liaison onto Zach onto other boards um, is doing double and triple duty and it's very appreciated. So um, Mina and I talked a little bit. She won't necessarily be at every meeting, but we're very excited about um, having um, a school committee liaison member to invite specifically if it seems important to okay. invite. Um, so everybody should be thinking of that. And I'm going to say one more thing before I entertain a motion to um, we, sure. what we need a we haven't even opened the Wilson Street <laughs> drainage. Oh. We need to move it to another hearing date. Um, 
It's no, or, sorry, no, it's not a public it's hearing. It's not a public just, hearing. We they didn't come, so we do need to move it to another yeah. day. But we didn't. It's one we didn't miss. But uh, I didn't say that they weren't coming. I apologize. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and I don't think the 27th no. can fit them. So uh, the necessarily September. the 17th yep. of September. Um, do we have a date? Right. We can just. Time. I do time. Yeah. We can be flexible. I, whatever. Yeah, whatever. We can be flexible. Leave that one flexible. We'll put it up there. There isn't that much flexibility, so leave that one. Flexible. And we need to uh, yeah. assign times for the other items as well. That first okay. Days. But you and I can do that. Hmm? The whole board doesn't have to first do that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So people are trying to get me to forget what I had in my mind, but I'm not forgetting. <laughs> um, I really want to encourage people to take up take my offer up and look at hearings that are coming forward and to uh, take the opportunity to lead a hearing if they would so like to do it, particularly people who might like to step forward um, in a leadership position on this board. I don't intend to have a long legacy term as the chair. I really, I really feel like different people should do it. Um, but, um, and I would really um, support and um, be enthusiastic about members stepping forward to give hearings a shot. Pick your hearing and uh, throw your hat in. So could you or Georgia send a list of the upcoming things? We can. Okay. Yep, we can, absolutely. Um, and it doesn't actually have to go through me because Georgia and I meet, Georgia, Fran and I meet um, Tuesday before the Monday. Um, so we'll know uh, before the meeting materials come out, before I've done any real deep prep work, we'll know if you have thrown in. So you definitely send it to me and Georgia, but if you get it to Georgia, it's, it's good enough for sure. All right. Is, does everybody want to keep meeting or should we entertain a motion to? Uh... So moved. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you guys. That was awesome. Thanks, everybody.